Hi guys and welcome back to the Melbourne Wheelchair Tennis Open for semi-finals night in the men's doubles. My name's Tim Cunley and next to me is Keegan O'Chi who is one of our Tennis Australia's wheelchair stars. Keegan, how are you tonight? Good, thanks Tim. How are you? Oh, well, I think we're in for a, for a great night of tennis. The, um, the weather, which I know the boys were talking about earlier today, that it was, it was a bit blowy, whereas the wind has died and I think we've got a perfect Aussie evening for a game of tennis. Yeah, definitely quite a balmy uh, evening we've got here. Some good doubles on the way. Got a couple of the best teams in the world uh, going around at the moment, so should be a cracker. Yeah, well, we've got, we've got the team from Great Britain, uh, Alfie. Alfie Hewitt and Gordon Reid. So, you know, Alfie is currently, he's number two in singles um, and he's also number two in doubles. And Gordon, he's doubles ranking, he's number one, so I guess they're partners. So, someone, is that how it works? Keegan, someone has to be one and someone has to be two, or they can't be equal one? Yeah, I do believe uh, last year at the Aussie Open, um, they did play with different partners. So, um, that's where Gordon uh, took out that tournament in the doubles. So, um, he'd have a few more points. But uh, since then, I think they've played uh, most of their tournaments uh, throughout 2017 together. So, um, they would be quite close uh, in terms of points and and the ranking, obviously. Yeah, and, and they're up tonight against the European pair, who I'm sure, I guess, all, well, all four are probably used to this heat, but um, Joachim Gerard from Belgium and Stefan Olsen from Sweden. So Joachim's 29 and Stefan's 30. How, how, do you, how do you see them working together? Have they played a lot of doubles together? Uh, they've played a bit of doubles in the past. Um, I haven't played them as a team uh, as yet, um, but I've played a lot of uh, singles against them and doubles uh, against them as well. And um, look for the two big serves there from uh, uh, Stefan Olsen and Joachim Gerard, um, two big strong boys, and, and especially Gerard, he's got really long levers and big arms, and he, he bombs it down um, on that first serve. So look out for that. Um, there, but um, yeah, I think it'll be I think it'll be a, a, a close contest here. Um, like you said, the wind has died down a bit, so that makes for for I guess a more clean clean tennis um, of the the rackets of the boys out here this evening. Well, I guess for those of um, people in Australia and p particularly in Melbourne, understand that when the wind comes from the north, it is it's really hot, and we've just had the the wind change, and it's slightly coming from the south now, so. The conditions tonight should be perfect. So the girls, I know in the, in the semis and the boys earlier today, they had this big, strong northerly, so it comes right off the desert in the middle of Australia and blows the temperature yeah. right up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. whereas now it has sort of swung around and it's coming out of the south just slightly and it, and it yeah, just a perfect, balmy Aussie evening. Yeah, a bit of that cool change come through uh, from down south. So, yeah, it should be, it should be a good evening. I think we're, we're set for some great tennis. So, so what, what's, what are some of the tactics that, that people should be looking for out there tonight, you know, particularly? Like, is it, is it pretty similar to, you know, we're going to start one up, one back, as you see um, in, can, you know, able-bodied tennis? Or is it, are we going to look for and see something a bit different tonight with the, with the wheelchair doubles? Uh, definitely with the serving team, I think we'll see... Um uh, the, the, the person, the player that's not serving uh, up at the net and uh, the guy serving there and, and looking to get um, up as well and back him up. Uh, from the receiving team, uh, you'll probably see both uh, players start from the back uh, and then look to uh, get on top with the return or uh, as quickly as they can and, and start to move up. Um, but definitely uh, with the quality uh, that these four players have and, and the, the variety and the, the pace that they have on their serves, uh, I think we'll, we'll definitely see a lot of action uh, for their partners up at the net. Uh, we also should just mention on, on court two that um, sometimes you might sort of be able to see in the background is that we do have the, the women's semi-finals. Um, so playing. So who have we got over there, Keegan, playing? Okay, so uh, we've got Manami Tanaka from Japan, uh, partnering up with Katarina Kruger from Germany, uh, up against the Dutch pairing, uh, one of the uh, top doubles teams in the world. We've got Marilyn Baus there, we are playing with Anik van Koot. So um, another great match on court two over there. And, and of, the, of the girls over there, what, what would be your selection tonight? I think I'd have to go with the Dutch girls, uh, Timmy. Um, I think they'd, they'd just be too strong um, throughout the hour and a half, two hours that they're out there. I think they're just too consistent, too too powerful um, 
for the girls to to come over the top there. Now, uh, just just thinking as as we're looking at here, Keegan, do we have? Is there ever any mixed doubles that happens in wheelchair tennis? Is there, is there ever? You know, like obviously we get to the grand slams and things like that, and that and that's where the big mixed doubles comes into play. Does yeah. it? Is there, do you have uh, any part of the circuit there's a bit of mixed doubles going on? Uh, they're, they're looking to integrate a bit of mixed doubles, um, like with the able-bodied mixed doubles. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of good laughs out there, and, uh, and it is tactically a little bit different. You know, you've got the, uh, the woman and the man um, playing either side, so the tactics do change a bit um, in the parts of the court you want to attack. But, yeah, we, um, as a, the tour is uh, looking to integrate that a bit more and... Um, hopefully in the future Paralympics it will be a, a medal event. Yeah, well, you, you sort of, you watch the girls hit and just like in normal, you know, normal able-bodied tennis, that they, they, they look like they can rip it just as hard as what the guys can. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I've um, had a lot of uh, practice sessions with um, the top 10 girls uh, over time and, yep, definitely if you're... If you're not looking, the ball's going to smack you in the, in the face, and it's going to hurt too. Because, like you say, they do um, they do put a bit behind it, um, just like the boys. Now, we also must mention that following this, the doubles match is the the marquee match of the evening, and and we have uh, who have we got who have we got coming up, Keegan? Uh, so we've got Australia's own Heath Davidson in the quad singles up against uh, David Wagner. Who's the number one player in the world, David? Exactly. So um, going to be a tough match for Heath, but hopefully with the home crowd, home conditions, knows uh, the tennis centre well here. Hopefully he can um, g get the win over the world number one. Well, yeah, and, and, and Heath has been a massive supporter of all the, the wheelchair programs out here. He actually was part of the initial when we released the Wheelchair Tennis Hub, which is a Tennis Australia initiative to get more people playing um, wheelchair tennis. So Heath was one of the first people to come out here, and it was, wasn't long after he'd, he'd won his gold medal in Rio with, with Dylan Alcott. So, yeah, he has been a massive supporter out here of, of growing wheelchair tennis, and he's, he's such an inspiration to all the kids and amazing guy at the time that he gives... Um, just to bring other people into the sport, as as does Dylan. But you know, Heath Heath really has has followed in Dylan's Dylan's footsteps, so to speak. Yeah, no, it's great to see. I mean, the development of the game is um, it's quite easy when you're sitting at the top uh, in your nation or in the world um, to you know get comfortable and turn up to your tournaments and get the results and collect your prize money. But it, it is important to give back and and remember you you know when you first started and those guys you used to look up to and. Uh, what not. So it's great to see uh, Heath and Dylan are both great ambassadors for, for the game, not only in Australia, but worldwide, Tim. So we're not far away from a start um, as the, the teams come back out onto court. Do we know who's won the toss? The boy, it looks like the English guys are about to serve, so they're, yeah. they're going to be serving from... Uh, the end closest to camera is the, the northern end, and then we, all, we have the southern end where we have Joachim and, and Stefan who are returning. So, um, yeah, so just just so anyone who's watching, that, yeah, right up the top here, and it, it looks like that Gordon is going to be the first to serve. So um, let's, let's enjoy this match. Yeah, here we go. What, what, it's amazing when you watch this live, and, and hopefully it comes across on the camera, the, the different spins and the, and the amount that the ball does spin and the, between the underspin and the top spin. Yeah, that's right. You definitely got to use your spins, and depending on the different parts of the court you're in, you've got to adjust those spins. So we've got all four players back here at the mo at the moment. What, what what sort of tactically are they looking to do here? That we you know we thought we might have seen some some people at the net or some play at the net. Yeah, I think early on um, in the doubles, you just want to get that good communication happening, get the movement happening, um, and then just get into the flow of the match. Uh, it's always tough uh, serving first. Um, you know, you're the most stationary person out on the court. So, um, as you can see, Alfie Hewitt there, lots of movement, lots of talk. Um, 
really setting the tone for the team there. Let's just overcook that one, Gordon. We noticed that when they're serving or and they're with the forehands, there's a lot of rotation through the chair. I guess that's that's a way that the players generate the top spin. Yep, that's right. Um, the chair uh, can be your worst enemy at times, but it can also be your friend. So it's about learning to um, hit your shots, but um, you know, using your body and and and, and the chair as as one uh, to get the most into into your shots. It's interesting. You can really see how much. Yeah, Alfie's just working the chair all the time, moving around. Yep. Lots of movement. That's a oh, great shot. Good, Beautiful yeah. forehand down the line there. Inside in forehand. I think you'll see that'll be one of the, the big shots for all four players today, that forehand kind of mid-court ball, picking and choosing, going down the middle, um, going that inside in uh, like Olsen did on that last point. Two break points saved there by the British, so a good start. Yeah, let's see Gordon Reid. They hit a, a few re reverse backhands in that rally. Tim, are you familiar with the reverse backhand? Sort of looks like a bit inside out, Keegan. Yeah, it does, it does look a bit like an awkward shot, but um, when you see the boys hit it and how hard they can hit it and the spin they can generate, it's, uh, it's definitely a good shot. So the idea of the, uh, the reverse, or what, what do we call that backhand again? Call it either the reverse backhand or the, the wheelchair backhand, some people like to call it. Um, basically the idea behind that, uh, in the early days of wheelchair tennis when the game was evolving, uh, you know, the, the athletes we see today, they're quick and they're fast and they're big and they're strong and the, the wheelchairs are quite advanced, whereas um, back in the day, um, you know, we didn't we didn't quite have those luxuries, so it was about finding the quickest way to be able to come over the ball on the backhand side, um, and that was to take your forehand grip and basically just turn your arm over, um, and, and and come over it, and hence the the term reverse backhand. Sure. The Brits end up holding serve there, so one love. Joe Gerrard to serve. Uh, the, the, you know, the one thing that they got amazing actions, haven't they? Like they're, they're, the tennis or the serving action, just it doesn't differ from the from the able-bodied serve. No, that's right. All the all the key points, all the key principles you you apply to your able-bodied serve is, is what you want to find for your for your wheelchair serve or your serve sitting down as well, Tim. So sell the serving to start with is it? Um, you know, we, we know the guys, you know, like in what, what sort of speed have they been measured that, you know, the guys are getting up to on, out of the chair here? Yeah, I've heard, uh, I've, I've seen a, a few of the guys get measured. Uh, I think you'd, you'd find um, the the Great gentleman serving. that's that's just um, served a big, nice, quick game there. Um, he's probably uh, the fastest server on tour. Um, I think he was clocked um, upwards of 170 k's an hour, so... Um, no mean feet sitting down. It's uh, you don't get to jump in the court or, or jump up to the ball. So um, to generate that kind of pace sitting down is, is quite phenomenal. Yeah, I guess it 
you know, it's really developing and what we talk about is having a fast arm, isn't it? Like that. That's right, and uh, that applies to, to all the strokes. But, yeah, if you can have it on the serve, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely a great help. So we've got Alfie, Alfie Hewitt serving now from the, from the southern end or the furthest end from the camera. Alfie's the youngest player on court. He's, Alfie's just 20 years of age. Um, having said that, he did turn professional in, at the, in 2015. So um, he's obviously he's not one of the most promising stars now. He is one <laughs> no, of the stars. He is, he? yeah. He is right at the top there. Um, yeah, quite a, a, I mean, a good story. Is, uh, you know, he came on the scene when I was already uh, an established junior and uh, beat him uh, once or twice but um, yeah he's definitely <laughs> gone and overtaken me there and he has overtaken a lot of players and skyrocketed up the, the rankings in a, in a quick amount of time Well the Brits once again are in a bit of trouble here on serve I love 30 down Frame off the racket of uh, Gordon Reid there. Love 40. There you go, the first, first break is served. Gerard and Olsen, so 2-1. Early days, but uh, Gerard and Olsen look uh, to be hitting the ball quite well, especially Gerard. Uh, he's seen a lot of the action with his service game, and, and that, that last back end there was pretty nice and crispy up the middle. So, Ken, what, what sort of hours would the guys be training each week, and like, are they putting as much... Hours in as you know, your, what you hear a lot of the professional tennis players do on the WTA ATP circuit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the the game is there's uh, there's more money involved, uh, more sponsorships, um, and and the prize money is growing. So, um, whereas say 10, 15 years ago, uh, a lot of the the top players uh, might have had part time jobs and and things like that. Um, now they're they're full time tennis players, so they are dedicating. Um, you know, upwards of three to four hours a day to on-court sessions and, and in the gym. So it is uh, definitely a full-time job and, and not much different to the, the ATP and WTA uh, males and females. Great shot. It's good to see some people, someone come to the net there. Yeah, it's good to see. I think Gerard um, is really hitting the ball quite nicely today. Um, definitely can can see it and can hear it. He's uh, really giving that ball a good whack. So um, doing the right thing following in his ball. Great slice backhand there by... Gordy there.
a couple of breakback points here. Olsen just struggling to find the range on the serve at the moment. Good break back there by the Brits. So, so Alfie and Gordon, are they good, they're good mates, are they, off the court as well? Like, do they spend a bit of time off the court together? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess all the Poms, are, they're all quite close, a close unit there. And, um, yeah, they, they practice a lot together and you see them... Saw them out at the mall last night together, having a bite to grab and a bite to eat. So, um, yeah, definitely. Good, look good off the racket, didn't yeah, it? Had it a, like that was going over. Had a cheeky look over and then thought, no, nah, I'm staying on this side. <laughs> Great point, great volley there, wasn't it? Great reflexes there. So, and we, and we look at the guys move around the court. Like a lot of time is spent developing the chair skills and you know, just just you know creating the ability to move and and hit. Definitely, I I um, like to tell people when they ask about wheelchair tennis. Um, Bad miss there from Gordon. Uh, I like to tell people when they do ask why, about wheelchair tennis, um, you know, what makes the top guys uh, stand out. And like the able body game, it is the movement. You think of your Rafa Nadal's and your Roger Federer's and Novak Djokovic's. Um, it's exactly the same in the wheelchair tennis. The, the guys that move uh, the best at the back of the court and the front of the court, um, you know, middle, middle more balls because they're in position uh, more often. Good movie there from Alfie, but Miss Volley means that the, the Brits go down 3 2. Big service game here, so we get a hold here that this is really probably what you know looking for. We've had a lot of break of serves the last three or four games. Yeah, that's right. Go uh, good hold here will go a long way to, uh, towards winning that first set. Just notice, Gordy Gordon shank a couple of those backhands. Is that sort of known as his weaker side, or is his forehand or his backhand, or? It's hard to say. I mean, he's, he is so good off both sides, but I guess um, if one were to break down, it is that uh, that reverse backhand. I mean, 
Um, it is quite an extravagant shot, and, and he hit, does hit it well. Um, but if there is a bit of movement, a bit of wind, or he's, he's not moving the chair, it's um, definitely susceptible to, um, you know, those shanks we've, we've seen early on here, Tim. making a few unforced errors, probably uncharacteristic unforced errors. Yeah, definitely. I actually uh, came up against Alfie and Gordon uh, in the previous round and unfortunately uh, went down there. Um, but they are a very solid team. But um, just early on here, just struggling a bit to just find the range, I guess. And uh, it doesn't help when you've got Gerard um, serving well early on. They've held so four two. <laughs> Always a good spot to be in four two now to consolidate, see if they can get another break and, and really push for that first set. So, we are for those of you who unfamiliar where we are. We're actually out at a Craigieburn, uh, which is a suburb north of Melbourne, about 30 minutes north of Melbourne. Um, and the players here after this week, which is the lead into the Australian Open, so eight of the men and eight of the women get go in and play the Australian Open next week, Keegan? That's right, Tim. Uh, the top seven uh, in the world in the, m the men's and the women's. Uh, and then the, there's the wild card for that eighth spot. Um, that gets given out by uh, at Tennis Australia's discretion mm -hmm. or the Aussie Open's discretion. And uh, and uh, and who, who received that wild card? Uh, this year in the men's, uh, we had Australia's own um, Adam Kellerman, who took out the uh, Australian National Championships uh, in November of last year. So um, I guess aside from taking the glory there and taking out the tournament, he, he earned himself uh, the wild card into the Aussie Open. Um, now in the women's, uh, Katarina Kruger from Germany uh, has, uh, received the wild card there. And uh, in the quads, um, who you'll be seeing later on uh, this evening, Heath Davidson, he, uh, he uh, secured the wild card there, Australia's own Heath Davidson. shot there. The boys really did no wrong there, Olsen and Gerard. They really peppered the middle, gave Alfie no angle and he's, <laughs> he's come up with it somehow. There's a beautiful off backhand. <laughs> Just wide there. We, uh, we spoke a little bit about their reverse backhand before, Tim, but uh, if you do watch Gerard, he's got quite a classical uh, backhand, um, but he still s hits it a at a bit of a different shape to, say, a Gordon or an Alfie, but it's still a, a very good shot. So it's more of a conventional backhand group? Is that what yeah, that's right. That's right, Tim. So um, more traditional, uh, conventional, traditional, those kinds of words come to mind. Can see his uh, his arm on that toppy back end comes through through the court a lot more, whereas Alfie and Gordon tend to swing quite uh, viciously in an upwards direction. And this, is a, this is a great rally. You can really start to see all the movement that that happens and the anticipation, can't you? What a great point. That's right. Good finish there. Good forehand by Olsen. Um, that's right. That's why um, you know, the men's doubles is always good to watch. You know. We get to see some good points and get to see these fine athletes um, really stretched uh, 
with the you know having to cover the full uh, singles and doubles court. So the, the Melbourne Open this year um, increased in status to an ITF uh, one. Um, what, what sort of what are the levels that that happened, Keegan? Right, you know, in regards to the ITF wheelchair tennis circuit. Yeah, great question, Tim. So um, obviously the pinnacle of the sport, and uh, in the wheelchair tennis, we do play at uh, all four Grand Slams. Um, so the Grand Slams and the year-ending Masters um, are the pinnacle or, or do offer the, the highest uh, amount of points and prize money. Uh, then you've got your Super Series tournaments, which uh, I guess the able-bodied equivalent would be a, a Masters Series uh, tournament. Uh, and then you've got the ITF1, which is the, the Melbourne Open here um, out at Craigieburn. So um, I guess that's why you can, uh, you can see uh, we've got a... Pretty strong field out here. A lot of the top ten. I think ten, I think all of the top ten in the men are here, and uh, seven of the top ten women are here. So a very strong field, uh, with good reason. Mm. Alfie not happy there. A warning from the umpire there by Alfie. I guess, I guess from that we can can foresee how much it means means to the players, and that yeah, that that they're, they're, you know, they're just as competitive. Definitely. As, as anybody, and and it means a lot to the guys. Definitely. Um, see this tournament in the calendar, and a lot of people would think, oh, that's a great preparation for the Aussie Open, and it's good to get out there and strike some balls and and feel the you know the conditions and whatnot, but. Um, don't tell these guys, they, they want it just as badly as the Aussie Open. So what do you think the boys need to do here to get back into it? We, um, just we'll, we'll get the, the score is, change of ends, the score is 5-2. Five 5-2 two. Five two to Olsen and Jared. Uh, yeah. I just think for the Brits to get back, I mean, um, they did start well. I, th I felt like Alfie was... Uh, out of the four players on court, the one that was really moving well and, and trying to find that rhythm early. But he, he just missed one or two volleys there and he's kind of just gone off the boil there and, and Gordon strength a few backhands. So I don't think there's much in it. Um, we just need to tighten the screws and, and get into the flow of the match. Gerard and Olsen really going after Alfie there. Yeah. Yeah, see, he, just, he just got stuck in an awkward spot, didn't he? Yeah, he just got he got he was quite still and he just wasn't able to move into the ball. Yep, just turning on the spot just in front of the baseline there. It's not a it's not an ideal spot to be in. fault there from Olsen. Just missed a sitter there, Gerard, at the net. It's a good move. He's a, he's a, he's a big boy. Yes. Gerard, isn't he? Big, big, big shoulders. I call him the A380, the biggest wing span going around. that there. Little cheeky drop shot there from Gerard, just missing wide.
Interesting move there from the boys. They both come forward to the net. Does that, that makes them susceptible to the lob, I guess? Yeah, definitely. But um, you see Jarrod there not even, I think, for one moment thinking about the lob. He, he saw it early and come forward and rip that forehand. Two break points saved there by Gerard and Olsen. Like Alfie and Gordon really, they really need to sort of break here even if they don't win the set just to be a lot more competitive. Yeah, just to, just to stop the bleeding, Tim. Black called there, just the ball from there. Jason Court just came onto the court. So you can see that the Hewitt and Alfie are out of shot there, but we can assure you that they're, they're really moving and you'll see them come into shot just as they're moving into the ball. So it does there look like no one's that the the boy uh, Gerard and Olsen are serving into um to open air, doesn't it? Yeah. And then yeah. the boys come into shot just at the last minute. Yeah, definitely. It's always a, a very important thing in wheelchair tennis. It's the first thing they teach you is always to keep the chair moving, so I guess that's why um the Brits we can't see the Brits because they're they're taking a bit of a bit of a run up into the court and into their return. Yeah, you can see from our different camera shot where the, the boys are moving, moving a lot in the back court there. Another break port opportunity for here for the Brits. Now we're, we're playing we're playing on plexi cushion, which is the same as at the Australian Open. So out here at Craigieburn is often referred to as a um, as a mini Melbourne Park. What what courts to the? That's a great shot. Oh, we get there. Great volley. Great touch. Good wingspan there. Good reach. Set point. But what what services do the players like? Do they do they like this sort of service because it's easier to push on, or is it? You know, because now you're even in, at Wimbledon on the grass and. Yep. I mean, we play throughout the year. We play on all surfaces: clay, grass, hard court, indoors, outdoors. Great volley. There's the first set. First set to Jared and Olsen. Uh, yeah, we played. Uh, I mean, on all surfaces. Uh, the plexi cushion is, I would say. Um, one of the better surfaces, the bounce is, is quite true. A um, little bit slower than some of the hard courts uh, going around these days, um, but you know it's, a, it's, it's still a great surface to, to play on. Um, I know I personally like uh, clay myself. I've got a lot of work on my balls, so um, yeah, I love to, love to get out on the clay, push hard and, and rip the ball. So we're now obviously 6-2 first. So what, what do we think the boys have to do um, going forward here? I think they, um, they just need to obviously tighten the screws a bit, um, try and find the court a bit more. Um, they're getting into the rally. They're getting three, four, five shots deep, but uh, the palms just aren't, aren't really, um, you know, they're kind of letting off, letting off on the gas there after, after a few shots. So they really need to keep that pressure on, start to see a few mistakes out of... Uh, and, and Gerard, and then um, yeah, maybe we'll see a, a bit of a tighter contest. Phil, just give me a few seconds. Okay, just grab it.
So just just to start the second set, we just got um, Philip Goodman's just come in just to um, say a few words. Philip's the tournament referee um, out here at Hume, so he's had a challenging couple of days with the weather. So Philip, we're, we're at we're in an evening session now. Um, how do we see the tournament going moving forward in regards to the scheduling for finals and everything like that tomorrow? Um, don't expect any problems at all tomorrow. The, uh, the forecast is pretty good, so we should have reasonable temperatures. I expect that we'll be playing from 10 o'clock through to the end of play with no issues. Boys off to a good start in the start of this second set, Keith. Yeah, that's what they need, I think. I think they need a, a nice quick game here. Let's see if Gordy can serve it out and just get a bit of momentum or, or just stop the uh, Olsen and Gerard momentum at the moment. And Phil, have the players been well behaved this week? Generally, they've been very good this week. We haven't had any real problems at all with the players. They've also cooperated very well with the weather issues that we've had and all been very accommodating with what we've had to do. Good to hear. I was hoping you'd uh, <laughs> throw a little dirt on <laughs> some of the players, <laughs> but um, well said. <laughs> Players, as as there's been a lot of discussion with the Australian Open in the last couple of days, and the and the heat policy and everything like that. Um, what what what's the sort of what, what's what do we look for? Because the the wheelies tend to um, have a is it a, a lower tolerance just because they're in the chair, or what's the or is it quite similar to the able body? Uh, for most of the guys, it's it's similar. The quads division. Uh, tend to have a little bit more of an issue with the heat. Uh, the rest of the guys are still professional athletes and can generally cope with cope with the weather. So that's not so much of an issue. And we do consult with the medical people here supporting them to make sure that we're not running any risk with their health. Like you're talking there from the boys, so... Bit of a mix-up, bit of confusion there. opportunity there. It's a big point. Good and read what forty fifteen in this game, so And Phil, you, you do a lot with the wheelchair tennis or you involve with um, all, all different types of tennis or is it just the wheelchair tennis that, that you do a lot of refereeing in? No, I work with, uh, with all the different events. Uh, wheelchairs is, is simply one of them. Do a lot with the uh, AMTs, the local events, as well as uh, work at the Grand Slam in at Melbourne Park. the first match we've seen. Uh, do we typically, that's unusual to see Alfie miss that? Typically it is. Uh, funnily enough though, I uh, played against him in the round before and he did miss a couple of couple of easy smashes. Um, so I don't know. I um, don't know what it is. Must be, uh, must be struggling to see that ball in the, in the low sun, this evening sun. There's the breaker serve, so Hewitt and Reed are really looking in a bit of strife here. 6-2, love one. Yes, not the ideal start to the second set. So 
So just the, the schedule tomorrow, Phil, what, what's the schedule we have tomorrow? We're, uh, we'll be starting play at 10 o'clock tomorrow. We will have the quads first up, followed by the men's final and then the women's final with doubles to follow those. And the weather looks great, doesn't it? We're actually going to have a perfect day. Yeah, tomorrow we're looking like mid-twenties and making it very, very comfortable for the players. Probably a bit cloudy, but otherwise an ideal day for playing tennis, we hope. Oh, great shot there from Alfie. Gerard putting it all on the line. Straight well, what do we fence. call that in wheelchair tennis, Keegan? We call it a stack? Um, <laughs> kind of a half stack. He managed to stay <laughs> in the chair. Um, don't know who was worse off the fence or, or, or Joe there. talking. Wow. That is a beautiful Ooh, shot. Great shot from Alfie Hewitt there. I hope that came up on the screen, but that 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 ball screwed right back towards the net and yeah, that that was a real indication of the different types of spin that the you know, both the top spin and the back spin that the players can put on. That's right, that's right. Oh, look at that, re that, that is a great shot. That may very well be um, what the Brits need, something like that, a cheeky little back spinning drop shot just to get Get a bit of momentum, just to get a bit of a change off, get something going. They've played some great points, and they've, they've you know, been playing great points early in games. They just haven't been able to just link those four points together, have they? Yeah, Jared and Olsen, just, just too strong, too consistent at the moment. Come on. Uh, good push there from Alfie, but that net cord has a mind of its own at times. <laughs> So, Philip, you're off to the, the Australian Open with the players next week. You, you have a role in there with the players? or Yeah, I'll be doing a similar role to I have been here. Uh, slightly different environment there with the, the Grand Slam facilities and the, the size of Melbourne Park, making it a little different. But for the players, it's uh, still the same rules and still the same processes. Great shot there down the middle from the Brits. Always a good play in doubles. There you go, that, that was the break back. One all. Let's see if uh, Alfie and Gordon can consolidate that and just put a bit of scoreboard pressure in the second set early on. So the temperature out here tonight, I think it's about a 28 degrees, which is down from 42 or 43 that we had earlier today. Nice bit of respite for the players. Great slice back in. So what, what is the official rule, Phil, in regards to the heat and when we're off and when we're on? Like um, today, obviously, we, we had early... Um, early matches before the heat came in and we, we sort of stopped play for five or six hours. So what, what, what it's the sort of the heat, the heat policy or the exact, the exact temperatures? Yeah, the, the temperature, there's no precise temperature at which you stop. It's a combination of the humidity and the temperature. The higher the humidity, then the lower the temperature at which it becomes an issue. So for us today, although it was very hot, we had low humidity, which allowed us to play in the morning. We knew that the forecast was 
pretty bad for the afternoon, so we actually scheduled an evening session to ensure that we could get playing good weather. It's another one of those missing back hands by Hewitt. Really look like they're starting to target Olsen a little bit. Do you think that's probably a, a good play? I think on a, on a day like today, just uh, seeing how well Gerard's played and, and come out and he's, he's been the, the best player out on court so far, I do think it's a good tactic uh, for the Brits to start going at, at Olsen a bit more. That's a great slice backhand. Volley. And Keegan, you, you, you're travelling, you're doing, are you full time travelling? Are you on the circuit? Yep, that's right. I've been on the circuit uh, since I was about 15, so I'm 24 at the moment. Uh, yeah, coming up to 10 years. Um, on the circuit, uh, travelling around, um, obviously it's a great time of year uh, to be uh, involved with tennis uh, and being an Australian. Um, all the tournaments are in your, your own backyard, um, but you know, once uh, the Aussie Open's over, um, all the tournaments head overseas, um, over to, to the States and different parts of Asia and Europe as the, the weather warms up in the Northern Hemisphere. Rally there. I feel like we're in for a, a bit of a close set here. It's a very tight affair at the moment. So once again, the Brits there in that game, you know, had multiple chances to to hold serve, and um, they're down two one. So like in like at any time, you just got to take your chances, don't you? Yeah, that's right. So important, especially when the uh, the opposing team is, uh, you know, another one of the best teams in the world. You know, they're not going to give you too many easy opportunities. So you do want to take those opportunities when they do come up. Well, Philip, thanks for thanks for popping in, and um, I'm glad to hear the players have all been good. You've never had any problems with Keegan, have you, and your time on the circuit? We'll leave that for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Philip. We can um, just sort of see in the background. You can see the Hume City Council, so that's where we are. So Hume um, is the council that. The tennis centre that is located, um, and Hume City Council three years ago built this venue as a purpose built um, tournament venue. Um, so, all the courts are ITF size. There's 14 plexi cushion courts and two European clays. So, um, the, the space at the back makes it, makes it great for pushing, I guess, Keys. It makes it important as part of the to be able to play. Yeah, definitely. You need that extra space, bit of extra space on the side, but uh, definitely at the back. 
very nice courts here, very nice centre. Like good, good community, up and coming community out here in Crazy Burn. So we've got a, we've got a little, little seven year old boy called Jin, um, who comes to the, to the wheelchair hub every week. Where, where did you start playing Keen? How, how did you get into wheelchair tennis? Oh, where do we begin? Um, so I've always loved sport, uh, Tim. I've always been a mad sport nut. Loved um, you know, basketball, tennis, cricket, rugby, you name it. I'd watch it. Um, so when I was younger, you know, I'd, I'd go to school and throw the footy around with my mates and um, it was all good. But, uh, you know, I got to a certain age. Great shot there from Alfie. Um, he took that early, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. That was, that was federal-like. <laughs> yeah, very early. Um, yeah, it got to a certain stage where I... You know, my friends were going out and competing uh, at school and on the weekends, and I wanted to, you know, I wanted a bit of that action. Um, and through Wheelchair Sports New South Wales and, and Tennis Australia, I've been given that opportunity to to try wheelchair tennis. And, um, yeah, I guess the rest is history. But, um, you know, the definitely to when I started to now, um, you know, there's definitely a lot more in place here. I mean, I mean we've spoken about the Wheelchair Hub um, already and, and young players like Jin, but um, definitely great opportunities uh, for up-and-coming athletes in wheelchair tennis. So we've got a wheelchair hub out here in Craigie Ban. Um, is there a similar one up there in New South Wales? Yep, so in, in Sydney, um, out at Surrey Hills, um, City Community Tennis there, um, Prince Alfred Park, um, great crew there. Um, they've been facilitating tennis, and Gordon's just lost his racket there into the fence. Uh, they've been um, great supporters of wheelchair tennis and been doing a lot of work um, with Tennis Australia, um, like out here at, at Craigie Burn. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's up and running there in Sydney and and providing opportunities for um, people in New South Wales to to get involved with the game. And it's not just young people, um, old people, middle-aged people. Um, you know, we we want everyone to come down and have a try and and you know enjoy the sport we love, which is tennis. Just, he's got him that's on the full there. That's the, the service point. You might um, want to explain that rule there, Keegan, that it's probably what happened there. Yeah, so, um, I mean, when the service serves, um, if it does hit the receiver or, or anyone on the receiving team on the full, it is the service point. A um, bit unfortunate there, though. It hit the net cord first and then hit Alfie on the full. So, um, Well, I, I think it's important to mention, though, that it actually didn't hit Alfie. It hit his chair. It hit his chair, which is... Um, you know, had it been coming for Alfie's head, I think he could have you know, quickly moved his head out of the way and looked the other way, but the chair is a, a bit harder to get out of the way in that, that short And the, and the chair time. is considered part of your body? That's correct. That's correct, Tim. I guess sticking with that theme, so um, very much the same when you are serving. If your chair or you, any part of your chair does go in front of the baseline or onto the baseline that is considered a wheel fault. So the whole chair has to be behind the line. Just That's as, correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Great volley. Great shot. And again, we just see on on Juice there, Alfie missing that backhand wide. Um, maybe going for a little bit too much, trying to squeeze it in there. Um, and then Gerard coming up with a big volley there. So, And like the last couple of games, the you know, Hewitt and, and Reid have been right in it. They've had, they've had both games to Juice and lost them both and 3-1 down so it just shows that all levels of tennis you've got to win the close games beautiful serve slice down the tee that's right Tim that is 100% right
good serve there from Gordon. And I guess um, it's important to mention, I mean, all four of the guys on court here have uh, great serves, but I guess what Gordon brings that's a little bit different is he's, he, he plays left-handed, so he's uh, got a bit of an advantage there. Makes it a bit uncomfortable uh, with the things he can do and the angles he can create into the opponent's backhands. Just in the last minute or two, the winds are uh, picked up considerably. I, I don't think anyone anyone would mind except for for Alfie and Gordon because they're now hitting into that breeze, um, which has really can change the conditions. But for all the spectators and us. <laughs> it's, it's quite nice, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, a bit of respite for everyone that's been cooking um, through this warm summer's day here in Melbourne. Self open there, didn't they, with that angle? What a shot from Stefan Olsen there. I saw it very early and just pushed and got there, and the job wasn't over. Still had to hit it over. So, once again, Hewitt and Reed were 40 love up. They've had their, they're having their chances, and so this this becomes a, Back to a big game, doesn't it? Yeah, must win we can, for the Brits. We can actually see over on, um, on court two that. Um, We've lost the tyre there. Yep. So Just a flat tyre, Katarina Kruger. Another thing us wheelchair players have to deal with is um, sometimes the go. equipment can um, <laughs> you know, cause you a bit of strife. <laughs> so you don't have to play on? No, what, what happens if that happens in the middle of a point? Is it called a let? Do you stop or do you have to, like, you break a string? What's what's the ruling there? Um, I do believe, uh, that's a good question. If, if only Phil was still here. <laughs> I do think. Great um, shot. Good shot there from the Brits. Um, I do think if, if your tyre does go flat, um, midpoint. Hmm. Bit of confusion there. Yeah. It's all happening here. <laughs> Drive volley. That's a great, great shot. shot. Great really good there. shot. Took that. That's the just feel like they just need a couple more of those, the Brits, and then it's um, the pressure's going to be back on Olsen and, and Gerard. But as, as I was saying before, Tim, if the if your tyre does go down during the point, um, like a broken string, you do have to play on. Um, but you are entitled to a, a, a maintenance timeout to, to get yourself sorted and, and back out on court. Great move there. You really sliced that out wide and then... Alfie was looked to cut across. It's definitely paid a lot of bills, that um, slice serve from Gordon. You know, I've played him a few times in the singles, and um, it's uh, I've got to say it's one of the hardest balls to return, that slider out wide on the, the ad side, going into your backhand, going away from your backhand, actually. Not my favourite return to Hewitt. Well, that that was a that was a big game for Hewitt and Reed. So it's three two. Gerard Nelson still up a break. So um, it is tight. It's tight, but uh, we shall see. The next game should be interesting with the with that wind picking up a little bit. Now the the Brits will will have use of that 
that win. So um, let's see if they can play well behind it. Well, they got the breeze for the next couple of games. So does that make a difference? Definitely does. I mean, you do it, hitting with the the wind is definitely definitely does help you out. Um, but sometimes it can also be be tricky um, because you, you can tend to overcook the balls and, and hit them long if you don't put enough spin and aim, hit the right spots. Uh, it looks like we've got a, another special guest coming into into the box here. Holly Toys, who's the um, the tournament coordinator for all the events here in Australia. How are you going, Holly? Great. Thanks for having me. We've got an awesome double semi-final on court right now, it looks like. Conditions are cooled, and how's, how's the tournament looking now? Great. I think we're sitting in pretty good form um, to finish this out tomorrow and then getting all the players ready to move into Melbourne Park for the Australian Open, which starts on Wednesday, January 24th. We have first-round matches of the wheelchair event. We're, we're, we're live streaming, obviously, now. How, how can people watch that? Is that is that sort of a similar sort of thing in at the Aussie, or how can people tune in if they'd like to see what's going on? Yeah, so some broadcasters, I know there's some European markets and ESPN South America, I believe, are picking it up. Um, Channel 7 will also be doing some coverage of the wheelchair event this week, too. Fifteen thirty here, little little step ahead in the game here, the Brits, and see if they can uh, break well, through. They, they have been getting up, at, like we said, early in games, haven't they? And they've, they've sort of got to start to take their chances. Great shot there from Olsen. So Gordon just got himself stuck too far on the court. Then is that? Yeah, it was, it was just an awkward shot. I mean, he was trying to come forward and, and do the right thing and play aggressive, but um, Olsen and Jared were just able to get it uh, right at his foot plate, right at his toes, and he had to dig it out, and um, the ball popped up, and, and Olsen had that, saw it early and had that opportunity to, to hit that ball down the middle for that winner. Great return. So oh, we've, got, we've got another good match coming following the, the doubles here. Who, who do we have following this on court one? Yeah, so we have reigning quad doubles. Oh, hello. Gold medalist <laughs> Heath Davidson taking on number one in the world, David Wagner from the USA. So it'll be a heated battle for sure between the two. Um, they've had some close matches uh, in the last few matchups. Uh, Heath has overtaken David. I think once, I believe, so I think we're in for a real good treat tonight. There's, there's no love loss between the, the Aussies and the, and the Americans. Yeah, so Heath and Dylan at the Rio Paralympic Games beat out David Wagner um, and his park, par like partner um, in the quad doubles final. So, um, yeah, definitely <laughs> a good matchup for sure tonight. I'm sure a lot of people might be um, Dylan. Is D Dylan still playing next week? Yeah, so Dylan played at Sydney International last week and won the quad singles event there, um, beating out David Wagner in the final last Saturday at Sydney Olympic Park. He will be also included in the quad division, um, so they start their first matches on Wednesday. And then there will be one quad doubles final at the Australian Open, which is next Thursday. Um, so it'll be it'll be a good battle for sure. Keegan, they might. Holly's talking about the quad division and the what's what's the difference between the the two divisions. Some people might not be aware of the the different divisions in wheelchair tennis. 
Yeah, that's right, Tim. So um, in wheelchair tennis, we have the two divisions. Uh, we have the open division, and in the open division, you have your your men's and women's uh, tours, and then uh, we have the quad division. So the quad division is basically um, players with disabilities that don't only affect their lower limbs, but also um, their their upper limbs. So uh, whether that's um, high spinal cord breaks. Um, you know, loss of function uh, through the upper extremities, um, all kinds of different um, disabilities there. So um, they do, uh, I, mean, I mean, they're not able to move or, or maybe hit uh, as hard as the open guys and um, they have the division there. So it's, it's competitive for those guys that uh, do have uh, their upper extremities um, affected. Hugh and Rita really got to change this pretty soon or otherwise they'll be getting changed pretty soon. That's right, Tim. Similar, exact same spot um, as the first set, 4-2 down. So Holly, your your history in wheelchair tennis is it? You got a different accent there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm from Canada. I worked with BC Wheelchair Sports back in Vancouver, and we ran two tournaments on the ITF circuit: Vancouver International and the Kamloops um, Open. So an ITF Futures and ITF Three. So I've moved over here to help out with the wheelchair circuit in Australia and to try and grow it as well here too. Um, just while you're talking there, we nearly had another stack. Yeah, <laughs> another. Coming straight towards us over here. So Round two between Gerard and the, the fence here. And wheelchair tennis overall, Holly, so globally growing? Yeah, most definitely. And, and here in Australia, especially over the last two years, um, Tennis Australia has really put an emphasis on um, funding and development. Beautiful forehand cross court there. Um, so through the Wheels Connect program, we are identifying new individuals to come and play in the sport around the country. Uh, and in the last 18 months, we've gone from one junior ranked on the ITF circuit uh, for Australia to, to nine juniors now with an ITF ranking for Australia. So um, it's pretty incredible to see the growth in the last little bit here. And all of our ITF Futures events are now including junior and women's draws, which we didn't see a couple years ago. So it's, it's exciting to see what the future has in store for wheelchair tennis for in Australia. Big rally here. And what happened there? Uh, just the ball uh, came over from court two, just rolled uh, through the back of the court. There, I was so engrossed watching the rally, Keegan. Yeah, I it, was just, <laughs> it was a great rally. Um, don't know who was happier that that was a lay. <laughs> Change hands then. It's a big point. That's well, Hewitt and Rita look big way to come back from now, don't they? Yeah, they're up against it. Now, stranger things have happened, Tim. So, I so Holly, you were you were talking about the 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 ladies and the juniors, and there's something else happening here tomorrow, which is a first as well. Was yeah, we have a junior green ball competition. So. Uh, we have a lot of up-and-comers um, playing wheelchair tennis right now under the age of 12. Um, so not quite ready to play a full match in the junior division of the ITF circuit. So uh, we've started to do a lot of little competitions, development events to get them their first competitive opportunity um, before they have to play a full match at an ITF circuit level. Yeah. And 
How many players do we have coming up? We have four little juniors coming out for tomorrow's session. So we hosted our first ever uh, green dot ball competition at this year's Wheelchair Tennis Nationals at Melbourne Park, and it was huge success. So we did fast four scoring for them um, and lots of doubles play. So we're really trying to um, develop that next generation of kids coming through, giving them competitive opportunities as well as um, uh, playing opportunities. Thank you very much for that uh, insight into um, what Tennis Australia is doing and, and what your, your role entails, Holly. Uh, thanks for joining no us. No worries. Thanks for having me on. There was a bit of emotion in that one, wasn't there? Yeah, that I think he, um, it, was a, it was a great shot. I mean, sometimes that is, it's not, sometimes it's not cross quarter down the line. Sometimes it's right at the player, but definitely a bit of, a little bit of venom on that one. Came off his racket like a, like a rocket. Nothing personal, though. These guys have a great deal of respect for each other, and you'll see them in the change rooms and out around the cafeteria having a joke around and playing cards and doing all that stuff. And Tim, the wind just picking up a little bit at the moment. Yeah, you probably can just hear a bit of the wind in the microphones, I'm sure. What a great shot. Great shot. What a shot. <laughs> God, he's just there. a lot of skill there. Don't, don't know if he meant to put it right there or <laughs> self-defense. Sure, I'm sure, sure we might see this one again, Keegan. It was a great shot. Look at this. Amazing. In, puts it Look out. at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're going to have to get that back again sometime. <laughs> it's a top tenner. Besides that, it was such an important point too, wasn't it? You know, the boys are now going to shoot and read a couple of break points, break back points. Yeah, beautiful forehand cross court there. So once again, they just can't take their opportunities, can they? And it's, no. it's looking like it might cost them. Yeah, we'll see what happens here, but that could be very costly. I can see Heath Davidson warming up over there, so he's obviously thinking that he's not going to be far away. Yeah, good crowd settling in here, watching the... Double semi here and um, looking to get fired up to cheer on the local Heath Davidson in his uh, big semi final coming up on court one right off to the doubles here. We just had another let there, that was a ball on court. move there from Alfie, took the ball early and created a bit of pressure. And I think we've got to give the, the Brits that credit there. They've been looking to, to move forward and, and make it happen. It just hasn't, I don't know, I guess they just haven't been middling the ball quite how they would have liked to. Yeah, another beautiful shot down the middle, but definitely see a change of tactic here from Hewitt and Reed. really looking to take the ball and move forward. Especially from this end, I think it's a good tactic. Uh, the end that the Brits are, are at, they're hitting into the wind.
happened a lot of times in this game. They've, they've, you know, Hewitt and Reed have just been caught in those awkward positions of backhand and forehands of the ball just climbing just out of their zone. Match point here for Olsen and Gerrard. Let good serve just clipped <laughs> top of the net there. Oh. Great pick up by Olsen and yeah, he did well there yeah. and then even up until the last shot he you know turned that defense into offense coming forward looking for that forehand and just just shanked it wide there. Back on juice. Great hands, got a bit of luck, but, yeah, the, but it was there. great volley. I think he um, that would have been up against it, had it not um, even if it hadn't touched the, the top of the net cord there, it still would have been a tough one for Olsen and Gerard to dig out. There's a great point, great point. Good break from the Brits. Five three. Then they're, they're not. They're not off yet, are they? Just, they leave everything out there. Yep. Last time around, Gordon did hold his serve. So let's see if he can um, keep it up. Bit of a bit of a cheeky grin on the, both of the boys' faces. Let's see if they relax a little now. Really see how much their boys are going to use all of the court here. That's really good. Great point. Very, very good finish there from Olsen. In the middle of that rally, you could really, there was a big gust that came that really sort of changed the, the flight of the ball there, wasn't it? The yeah, that's Gerard right. and Olsen were really trying to use that wind to, to push the um, Hewitt and Reed back in the court, deep in the court. That's right. You can see Hewitt Reed just teeing off on the ball, and it, the ball just dying up by the time it gets to the other end. Oh, that is oh, a beautiful, shots. big forehand cross court. That's up there with the best. Would, um, even Roger Federer would be proud of something like yeah, that. Yeah, look at this. Look at him just really just move into that ball and take it on the rise. <laughs> oh. It's half volley. You got, have you got that shot, Keegan? I do, uh, but it's probably a, a one in one in a hundred shot for me at the moment. <laughs> Gordon's probably making one in one in ten of those. Yeah, that was um, that was just about the shot of the match so far. Good move there from Olsen, move forward and take the ball out of the air. Thirty all now, big point. You 
can see tonight and throughout the tournament, we've been lucky to have some of the ball kids from the Australian Open who have been out here looking after the players and they've got some great outfits courtesy of Uniglow. So the the global sponsor of the ITF, Uniglow, they're, they're a great supporter, aren't they? Yep, the, the uh, tour sponsor, uh, the ITF Wheelchair Tennis Tour. Um, always been great supporters of wheelchair tennis and... Um, do sponsor a couple of the athletes, uh, one of them being Gordon Reed and another one being the great champion himself, Shingo Kaneda. Um, they've been big sponsors of him over the years, so it's, it's great to see them come on board as the, the, the tour sponsor. So we've got match point here again. See, that's a big backhand. I just feel like if if the Gordon and Alfie can get through this game, uh, get up the other end, get the win behind their back, you know, they might be they might um, be able to get up in this set, even though they are five three down. But it does start with this one here. Great point. Couple of I did everything right just until that last ball that just pushed it long. So you see, you see Reed there, he really had to, took the, the one of those backhands, a drive backhand yeah. out of the air. That, that, that must be a, a hard shot to do. Oh, it's quite spectacular, isn't it, when you see that, that reverse backhand out of the air. Match point again to Gerard Nolson. Go. There we go. Well played there from Gerard and Olsen. Very well deserved win. That was a great, it's a good match, and just probably Hewitt and Reed just had their chances early. You know, really set some of the games up, and just weren't able to take their opportunities. That's right. You look at the scoreboard, and you think six two, six three, are uh, pretty comfortable to the other guys, but uh, was a lot closer than that. Yeah few opportunities gone begging for the, the Brits, Gordon and Alfie. But um, I guess they'll, they'll have another go. They'll have another crack next week at the Aussie Open. Um, so, so there is doubles as well next week? It's not just singles yeah. and doubles? Yeah, that's right. There's doubles um, at the Australian Open. So four teams, uh, the same eight players that play singles, um, will all partner up and and play doubles later on in the w in the week. Um, so we're, the next match to come up will be East Davidson and he will be playing the world number one David Wagner so from the, the USA we're just getting a word here from the referee just regarding um, what, the, what the schedule will be going on yep so we probably um we might even be seeing this match under lights, which will, which I'm sure will give a different aspect. We haven't had a match under lights yet this week, but because we've had a delay in play because of the weather, that um, could look like we have a have a night match. Oh, I'll have to take the sunnies off, mate. <laughs> have to whip out, look, get the look eyes pretty, out. You're looking pretty cool there, though, Keith. <laughs> yeah, 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 that probably. Was, that was the plan. <laughs> uh, be wearing the sunnies uh, if the lights are. <laughs> so hopefully, um, just in the next match, we might be able to get just a few of the, the players just to pop in and sort of talk about what's going on and um, throughout the circuit as well to get some of that international feel. I know we're, we're going back into Europe now in the, probably the right time where people are up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know what the weather would be like there though. Like oh, cold and miserable. <laughs> <laughs> we whinge about it being too hot uh, down here, but uh, certainly better than the, the alternative. Yeah, no, it is a, it is a beautiful night. So... What we might do is that we might just take a bit of a pause and um, we'll come back in the next five to ten minutes in the next match when we see Heath.
taking on David Wagner. Guys, well, we just just come back, and we're we're lucky enough to have one of the the partners or of the winning pair. So, um, Joachim Olsen to Stefan join Olsen. us. Stefan, Stefan. So, sorry, Stefan, Joachim Gerard, close. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Um, made a great match. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we play good, good out there. I um, I think Alf is a little bit hurt though. Like he's not playing as he's supposed to. So we just pretty much put the ball in. Waited either for the arrows or we got an opportunity and went went for it. And the conditions? <laughs> conditions way better this <laughs> this evening than this yeah, morning. Yeah. <laughs> Quite nice. There were a few periods though the gust picked up a little bit mm. and towards the end of the match. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I felt it on my toes there sometimes, so I just had to take it down, but it was right. Well, you know, look, I guess throughout the match that you know, you know that the boys, the the English, they they did you know, early in games. Mm -hmm. You know, that was it was a lot more competitive maybe than what the what the score shows. They they had their opportunities. Definitely, yeah, they had a lot of love, forty forty love advantages to to actually get ahead. But we just stuck stuck through our game plan and it worked out. So, and y you play next week at the Australian Open. Oh yeah, oh, looking yeah. forward to that. Oh yeah, that's going to be awesome. What's um in Australia? You en you enjoy coming down? I love Australia. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I have a 
actually a tattoo on my side of, side of Melbourne. <laughs> so it's one of my favorite cities. Cra Craigie you, man? Uh, so maybe I can put no, in a little, yeah, little, little bit of a mention in there. <laughs> Mate, and, and just looking at your bio, so probably some of, you, some of the highlights of your career so far. Sorry? Some of the highlights in your career so far. It must have been the Wimbledon the single title last year. This is definitely the biggest one I've, I've done. I'm super stoked with that, and then the Paralympic gold in uh, in London 2012. That's probably those two that are ranked the highest, and I'm most pleased with. That gold medal was the doubles with uh, Peter Wickstrom. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Correct. I remember that one? Yeah, Very yeah, good. we had fantastic week there. And the um, the Swedes. Do you, do you get many many of the Swedes coming? You know, from 15, 20 years ago, the Swedes were big. Supporters in yeah. in Melbourne. Do you, do you get any of them coming out to support you we next still, week? We still have some, um, but uh, I mean, my, I have my coach, so that's that's the only yeah. one I need, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> but 15, 20 years ago, that they, they were a highlight of the Australian Open, weren't they? Oh the, yeah. Hey? Oh yeah, yeah. They were awesome back then. Um, th there's still some few here, uh, so I would really hope they're they're coming out next week and supporting me as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, mate, look, congratulations, and we're, uh, tomorrow um, is the final again. So yeah. thanks for thanks for popping in, and um, that that was that was a, a great match. I um I like to say Keegan tipped you, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll chat about that later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks again. Well yeah, thank thanks, you guys. So.
referees have Anthony Cottrell and Koji Sajino to call number three. Note this match is a call change. Thank you. to welcome everyone back for the second match of tonight's evening session. We have uh, world number one, David Wagner, taking on Australian number two quad player, Heath Davison. So this looks like it's going to be a great setup. Matchup, Keeks, what do you what do you make of this of this one? Yeah, it's definitely a good one. I mean, Heath's come on the scene in the past couple of years and really, I guess... Um, ruffled up the scene, the quad scene, and, and taken out a few of the top guys. And I think he's sitting at number five in the world at the moment. So um, the last time they played, uh, I know David Wagner did beat Heath uh, fairly comfortably. Um, but Heath has beaten uh, Wags a couple of times uh, late last year. So it uh, should be quite an intriguing matchup, Tim. We, um, we can see David there on the screen. So the, you know, he, he's the world number one. and. At the moment, um, who's, who's two and two, three and four? Do you know? Okay. Uh, so at the moment, number two is uh, Andy Lapthorn uh, from the UK. Uh, number three is Dylan Alcott. Um, it's 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 a tough one. I think I think you still got to back Dylan um, as the number one player in the world. He just hasn't played um, the same amount of tournaments as the other guys, so his, his rankings down a little bit. Um, then you've got four. You've got Lucas Sitol from South Africa, who's uh, playing in the other semi-final. So, um, again, like the Met Open men and men's and women's, uh, we've got a very good lineup here at the Melbourne Open for the quads. So um, we're on we're on court one here. So there's there's Heath on the screen. You can see um, just warming up. And on on court two, so the other semi-final is just about to get underway. And, and Who's, who's in that semi? So we've got Lucas Sitol, the number uh, four in the world, and we've got a new, uh, new up-and-coming player uh, from Taiwan or Chinese Taipei, so it should be a good matchup. I think I'd back Lucas to, to win that pretty comfortably, uh, but you never know. So David has been... He's been on the scene for a long time. He's 43. Um... He's a base, plays he's from the U.S. He's um, on the West Coast there in the U.S. And what's his do we know, what's his hometown? Where's he from? Do we know? Uh, I do. I know. I do know. He's a big Seattle uh, Seahawks fan. In there, if any NFL followers out there, um, I believe he might be from Portland. Uh, but don't yep. quote me on that. Maybe we might get him in after the yes. match in Washington <laughs> State. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Mount, clarify Mount, that with you. Mount Rainier. Have you heard of Mount Rainier? Do you know? Do you know no, where I that haven't. is? That's, yeah. So, so anyone, anyone watching from up there, Saint, Saint, Saint Helens erupted back in 1980. <laughs> Keegan. <laughs> so, um, but it's interesting. So, just about last last year, um, David has won just about all the tournaments he entered into. So, like he is, he is one of the best quad players, probably. In the world, but, but nearly of all time. Yep, definitely quite a decorated career, and then still still ongoing. Um, but yeah, he has achieved a lot, um, done well at the the Paralympics over the years, um, and still competing at a high level, still um, up there as a, the number one player in the world. So it's it's good to see, um, but it's also likewise good to see um, guys like Heath Davidson, who's a good mate of mine. It's good to see him coming up and and really, like I said before, you know, ruffling everyone's feathers up and, and, and getting some results and trying to push through and, and um, you know, a bit of a changing of the guard, I guess, Tim. So what do you think Heath needs to do tonight to, to be competitive in this match? I think uh, the match is going to be more won and lost in, in the mental game. Uh, I think de Heath definitely has the the shots and the movement and the power to take down uh, David. Um, but it's just whether he can keep a cool head. Um, you know, he's got to 
got a, a lot of his mates out here, so whether that uh, has a calming influence on him or, or goes the other way, it'll be interesting to see. But um, yeah, it'd, it'd definitely be won and lost there in the, the mental game. Well, it looks like he's got a new do for the night. Looks like he's um, he's had a bit of a touch of the side cuts, like a bit of a curious look. Here we <laughs> go. Off we go. First serve of the game. Beautiful backhand down the line there from Wagner. And uh, it's only the first point of the match, but get used to that. Uh, Wags does have a very good slice back in. Shot there, good serve, good forehand. Good first ball after the serve there from Heath Davidson. So we, we've just seen the doubles. Keegan and obviously a lot of movement with the players so how, how's the tactics change here between the doubles and the singles? It's, you definitely want to do the same things you know keep the movement and 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 move forward when you can when you do have the opportunity um, but you know the court is, uh, is a lot bigger um, smaller but bigger in the single so there's a lot more ground to cover um, and you've got to play a bit more I guess a bit more tactically and and hit your spots a bit more precise as you don't have someone to back you up. Good serve there from Heath. So Heath trains here in, in Melbourne and you train in Sydney. Like That's how right. often do you guys all work together? Do you work get to work together much or is it yeah, through the year, um, Heath will either come up to Sydney or I'll be down in Melbourne, um, at Melbourne Park, and and uh, through the year we'll play similar tournaments as well. So we'll we'll link up there and see each other and, and warm each other up and, and have a few practice sessions. So um, yeah, I do get to see a lot of Heath throughout the year. Well, we're pretty lucky tonight in that um, we've now got head honcho of wheelchair tennis in Australia, Greg Crump back joining us. So, Greg, you've, where you been so far tonight? Oh, I've been everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just come off uh, court five. They had uh, four and five. They had the juniors playing out there, a couple of singles matches. So there was uh, a couple of juniors from uh, Melbourne, one from Sydney, and one of our players from Australia, but he lives currently in uh, Qatar. So he comes back every summer to uh, play some tennis. So uh, some good singles and good to see plenty of juniors out there playing and uh, having a good time. Crumpy, you've been heavily involved with the juniors um, in recent times. What, what's the future looking like? Uh? Uh, the future's looking pretty bright. We've got a, a good bunch of uh, young juniors starting to play some uh, regular tournaments and uh, getting plenty of coaching weekly. So uh, they're definitely on the improve and uh, they'll be, uh, they're still nice and young, so they're learning all the time. But in the, the coming years, they'll be better. And we've also got a, a, a second group of even younger juniors again. So uh, we've got plenty of up-and-coming uh, juniors to uh, take place of our seniors in, in the coming years. Well, he's won the first game, so good start by the Aussie. Yeah, good start. Always good to get the first one on the board, get the get a bit of a few of those nerves out. So what should we be looking for here? Uh, I think the, the key here is for uh, Dave Wagner is very, very good at changing direction of the ball. So if you could take time... Just like that. Open, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, right on cue. So if you can get the ball on the first bounce on the rise and take some time away from uh, Dave, you, you're going to be in the good seats. But if you uh, wait for the ball to come to you, he'll start pushing you around the court and uh, make... Uh, life pretty difficult for you so uh, he's a good hitter of the ball he will change direction you'll do a lot of pushing if you don't uh, be positive and aggressive and uh, there he goes yes That's really good change of direction mm. hits big targets well all day long so we've just we've just had the lights come on here at, at Hume so we should find in the next sort of five to ten minutes that the just in the twilight, but the lights will really start to take over. So it might look just a little bit dull on your screen, but it will it will really brighten up in the next five to ten minutes. 
Well, just look how beautiful it looks. <laughs> <laughs> it looks magnificent <laughs> out there. <laughs> Picturesque right <laughs> around the tennis. There we go. There's yeah, our lights. There's the lights. And uh, no, the view Fine looks fantastic. Up. Beautiful conditions for tennis now, unlike uh, three or four hours ago. We. You, you did. Um, how, how, how did that? How did that go this morning in that wind? Uh, well, we thought we were going to lose our little house and uh, everything else, but the uh, the <laughs> ladies uh, in the, the semi-finals, it was uh, tough going for them. The, the men played well, but uh, it was still pretty trying conditions and, and very, very hot. But uh, beautiful enough, slice back conditions right now. It's perfect. There's a, a great. There's a great slice backhand from Wagner. He uses the same grip, does he? Is that what he's forehands and backhands? Yeah. So if you look closely, you can see um, he's actually got the racket taped to his hand. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, he does uh, hit with the same grip uh, for all of his shots, his serves, forehands, backhands, volleys. Wow! I mean, there's a little bit of wrist movement there, but um, in terms of grip change, there's n not a lot going on there. So very, very skilled to be able to hit all those different spins with the same grip. Yeah, that's a that's a good move there from Heath. So wow! Look at look at that. We we can sort of see how that that the racket is taped in there. So that's part of his disability, is it? Do you know? Yeah, he Greg? doesn't have the, uh, the strength in his hand to, to grip the racket. So if he didn't have the racket taped to his hand, um, it would fall out of his hand at, at contact. So uh, he needs to do that. So, uh, yeah, one day if you've uh, got to roll a tape, tape your uh, racket to your hand and go and try to play, and it's incredibly difficult. Um, but in a wheelchair, it's, a, it's even a bigger challenge. So uh, well, yeah, it's great, great skill to do that. Look at that. that that's, that's amazing. And and he's a great competitor, Wagner, isn't he? He likes to. Yeah, he's been around the traps a long time, and uh, <laughs> he, he competes to the end. And uh, you know, he can get a bit feisty, but nothing wrong with being feisty and competitive. It's uh, a part of the game. Just what Heath doesn't want to do is get pushed back too deep. Otherwise, yeah, beautiful that's shot. going to happen. He's he's got to get up, get on the first bounce. As soon as he gets deep behind the baseline. Uh, you know, David's just coming in, pushing yeah. in and picking the spots and exactly. picking it off. Yeah. So he's got to get up there, be more aggressive with his position. He might lose a few, but uh, set the tone will pay uh, dividends later on the match. Here's a question to Keegan. Uh, where um, Heath is setting up, do you set up in that position to, to serve from? So uh, he sits out wider on the second court? Yep, I like to. That's something I like to vary, uh, depending on the serve, um, and I like to be able to hit all serves from, you know, being able to sit closer to the the centre tee and being able to sit out wider and still being able to, no matter where I sit, be able to kick it out wide or, or slide it down the tee. So um, it's definitely a, I guess a bit of a chess game. You might show show your opponent that you're you're setting up wide and you you're looking to serve out wide, but then you you slide it in and. Um, catch them off guard so um, but I do know Heath does like to sit out quite out wide and and hit those um, big sliders out wide we've also got sitting not too far away is um, Henry Henry de Cure did I say that right yeah that's right there you go so Henry's um, another one of the, the Aussie tennis players we might just get him in yeah, next yeah. over here next to you He's also in a, a touring band as well, which is, um, he doesn't like to uh, talk about his musical ability, but he's, uh, he's very, very good as well. Yeah, so he's um, just making his way in here to run a, run a grass surface here, which makes it just a little bit hard to move. Great serve there from Heath. So Henry, good to see you again. Thanks, Tim. How you going? So... What, how do you think Heath's going to go tonight? You're, you're one of his good mates, aren't you? Oh, I'm very good mates with Heath. Been no, known him for a long time. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think the last few matches against David Wagner haven't been the most competitive for him, but he's beaten him twice before, so um, he definitely knows that he's good enough to beat him. And um, so far, it's a fairly close match so far. And Henry, how did your tournament go this week? Um, so I played first round against Evans Maripa from South Africa. Um, pretty tough against someone with that sort of power. Um, but uh, in the first round of consolation, I got a win against Marty Dunn. 
um, from Australia, living in Geelong. So nice to get a win against um, a fellow Aussie. Um, and uh, the second round in the cons, I played Daisuke Arai from Japan um, this morning, and it was very, very blustery condition conditions. So it was pretty hard to, I guess, maintain my technique, but um, uh, he beat me 6-3, 6-3. So not a bad tournament for me, um, especially the first match against, or the second match against Marty. Um, and hopefully I can uh, continue that on in Auckland next week. So we just saw Heath hold serve. 2-1 There's a good start. Crumpy, be happy with this? Oh, there's nothing wrong with leading at this stage. Um, he was down to 35th there, I believe. So, uh, yeah, good to get out of that one. And uh, the more he can keep his nose in front, and uh, he'll feel you know, more and more comfortable as the match goes on. So it's important that he, he keeps leading or, or staying with him at this stage and uh, start to build the confidence and uh, get used to the conditions out there. So, um, yeah, it's good. He'll, he'll settle down as the night goes on and hopefully keeps playing uh, nice and aggressive. Henry, where, where, where did you start playing your tennis? Um, so I live in Adelaide. Um, so I've been playing tennis since I was about seven years old. Um, so quite a long journey for me. And I started travelling when I was about 12. Um, I'm 25 years of age. So um, probably been playing wheelchair tennis now for geez, 18 years. Makes him a veteran. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm a veteran at 25. Yeah. He's an old man. Yeah, Just it. look at him. <laughs> Um, so I met Crumpy when I was 12 um, at a junior camp in Melbourne um, and travelled overseas for the first time when I was 15. So sort of been on the ITF tour for 12 years or so and travelling properly for nine years, nine, ten years now. Yeah, so yeah, very much a veteran. And uh, apart from this tournament, Henry, which is the, uh, the nicest tour in the world to go? Uh, me and Crumpy have had quite a few good experiences in Belgium. Um, and as Crumpy alluded to at the just a few moments ago, we had a band we created in Belgium recently, so get around it. Dermot says yes on Facebook um, with Crumpy on the, uh, on the, what was it? Electric ukulele? No, the banjo. Oh, the banjo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the bongos, um, probably the only musical instrument I can play, but um, we'll give it a go. <laughs> but don't worry about the... Uh the instrument players and the backup singers. It's all about uh, Dermot Bailey from the UK, from um, Kettering, K-Town. If you're watching Dermot, hello. Good morning to you. Happy with that call, but uh, no, I it, was, think he was, uh, it was close, close wasn't it? Way to actually make a call. No, it, was a, it, was a, it was a close one. Here we go. This could be a bit of controversy early on. Good shot from Heath no. Davidson. We, we, there's no Hawkeye here, but we can have a close look. Oh, that was oh. very close. Oh. Here we go again. No Hawkeye. Oh, oh. I, I think guess that's the, got a good the viewers can make the decision there. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, oh. Dave was facing the wrong way, so he didn't have a real <laughs> good view of it. Anyway, 30-15 to Heath. Great volley there. Good move from Wags. Too good from Wags. That's his bread and butter. Now, the quads, they, they have doubles as well? That's right. The quads play doubles. Um, again, very similar to the, the men's doubles we saw earlier this evening uh, with the movement and what you want to do, get into the net and and the communication, some of those things we've spoken about. So, um, yeah, really no difference. Uh. Break point. So he's looking okay here at the moment. Yeah, look, he Absolutely. Yeah. should be uh, trying to attack here and, um, you know, take advantage of it, set a tone, even if he misses out, at least uh, be positive about it. So moving up. There you go. Solid Thank tennis you, there from Heath. Nice and deep. So, Henry... Heath gets through this match. Be pretty excited. I think so, yes. Um, and I think this is probably the tougher part of the draw. Um, so um, nothing against uh, Lucas. That would be a good challenge as well if that was to be the eventual finalist. But um, Wags being the world number one and plenty of experience, um, it would be a pretty big win for Heath to get through this. So, 
the uh, obviously going into the Australian Open next week. Both these guys are playing, so it'd be good to get the uh, the upper hand if they do happen to play each other next, uh, which they do in the in the round robin with them. Yeah, just get that get that one up. Be fresh in the fresh in the mind. Well, David did win this event, the Melbourne Open last year, so he is undefeated here so far, so he has got a bit of a... Bit of a happy hunting ground. Yeah. It's a new haircut, isn't it? Trump, is that uh, yeah, that's only a couple of hours old, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. I had lunch with Heath today, and he looked like a hairy gorilla, and he's uh, trimmed himself up nicely. Looking that's sharp. Great forehand tennis. As I said earlier, if he can keep uh, taking time away from Wags, it's uh, it's going to set him up nicely. And again, the last two points, he's getting the ball early, hitting big targets, so uh, happy days, not getting pushed around. Wags is probably the sort of person that likes that extra bit of time to prepare as well, so... shot from Heath. Good push. So look, so just looking at that there with, with Heath, and so he's doing a lot of work off court, like cause he, he has really improved in the last six months, 12 months. Yep, definitely. He's, uh, he's really improved. I think he, he's always been a very talented player, um, very fit, very strong. I think he's made huge gains in the mental department and, you know, keeping his head screwed on and, and not going walk about through matches, and that's why he's really been able to compete against these top players and get, ins get himself up in the top 10 and really solidify that spot in there. He had a, uh, a, a tough first round match there where he, he played a new uh, new opponent there and he, he won in a, a third set tiebreaker and it was a tough match and uh, six months ago that match may have got away from him but he's a lot more uh, competitive all the way through matches and all of a sudden um, yeah, it transfers into these bigger matches with the better players. Yeah, for those of you he won 8-6 in the third set. Tiebreaker? Yep, that's right. That's a beautiful backhand down the line. Um, he really, uh, it plays his best where he's not trying to overplay the ball. He's uh, nice and comfortable, just hitting big targets, taking his time, not trying to force it. And... Um, yeah, the results are coming, and he's he's hitting placement, and he's picking up winners anyway. So uh, that's just good, smart tennis. Here we go. Let's see on the replay here. Heath Davidson, plenty of time, goes off with the backhand. So, th so that that change of direction there, that that's a an important part, particularly in the in the quad, because in the quad wheelchair, because they don't move as well. Oh, I would, I would think so. Yeah, that was a, that's a pretty popular play to hit him back and behind your opponent, but even more so in the in the quad division where they they don't have the the mobility. So, um, but that's a that's a really good play. And even when serving, to hit back and behind the serve as well, the, it's a fantastic play. If they get it, then you've got options to to go either either way. That was just a, again big target, pretty easy done. So we can see here, Dave really strapping that. The racket in, adjusting the tape. Does he does he keep wrapping over and over as the match goes on to the point where all of a sudden it's? I do know at sometimes, <laughs> yeah. I mean, turn into a big glove if you kept doing that. But I do know um, at at set changes they do like to the quads do like to um, retape, maybe take all the tape off or or bits of it and and retape just to get the tension there. Sometimes they uh, they wrap it and they reverse the tape so the sticky's on the outside so it sticks to their push rims and uh, you might have been wearing off the sticky bit so he put a bit more on to, uh, to help him with his pushing. Well, Heath really looks like he's on here. That was a beautiful forehand down the line move. The timing of the movement into that ball was perfect. Just caught a glimpse of Lucas there in the background. Lucas is an 
Talk to me about Lucas's serve. It's amazing. He's an amazing athlete. Um, Lucas has, uh, he plays with his left hand, his left arm, um, but he's only got half of his right arm uh, down to his elbow. So um, he's got no hand on his right hand, on his right side, so he can't throw the ball up with his uh, non-dominant hand. So he actually has the ball on his racket, um, throws it up and uh, and serves like that. And it's, uh, it's quite phenomenal to see and See if we can get a shot of that in a minute um, of Lucas serving on court two. Another great backhand down the line. Shots. Five one. Here we go. Here's Lucas. Look at him. it's um. Amazing. Very handy serve as well. Yeah, it's got a big serve, doesn't it? Yeah. Really great technique. So, anyone at anyone at home watching that? Have you tried that, Crumpy? Serve I have. Like that? I've uh, <laughs> shown a few people. I've shown them how to serve with one hand, and uh, it's a good Look party trick. But. Uh, He's raced to a 5 1 lead. Yeah. I couldn't have. Did not see this one coming, Timmy. Uh, this is uh, Wags here. He's uh, always won the bit of sportsmanship there, just wandering around, waving at people just to slow the match down. So uh, <laughs> good on you. It's part of the game. Gamesmanship. And uh, just getting me thinking about it. So. Uh, yeah, he's, um, needless to say, between. The Aussies and the the US from the the gold medal match in Rio. It's been a. It was a competitive match, and uh, wasn't too many firm handshakes at the end of it. So Henry was talking about that. We'll just get you back in for a second. That. So what what are some of the great rivalries that that you guys find that you have on tour? Oh, probably Keegan O'Chi and Henry Dekeel, I reckon. <laughs> Mate, that's not a rivalry. No, that no, hasn't no, been a rivalry for no. six <laughs> years at least. <laughs> Me and Keegan have played many, many a match, but I haven't beaten him for a long, long time. So, um, but I reckon, oh, good question. Um, what about just just yesterday? Um, we had uh, Shingo Kanida and Stefan Huday. That's been a big one over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, both of them were number one and two in the world for quite a few years. Um, and both of them are still obviously inside the top ten. So um, probably many a match to come in the future. But um, oh, in the quads especially, like obviously Wags and Dylan Alcott, they've probably played a number of Grand Slam finals over the last two or three years. Um, Dylan and Heath these days as well. Like I think Heath is probably wanting to get his first win over Dylan soon as well. So um, if that might come next week, we'll, we'll wait and see. But um, Are you tipping that? Oh, am I tipping that? I don't know. Um, well, Dylan's taking the week off this week, commentating for Channel 7. So um, uh, maybe he's got a bit of extra match, match practice. Maybe so. after all this, he might be in a bit of strife. Yeah, exactly. Hey? That's it. Yeah. Won't have well, that clearly, job either. Clearly, Heath is in good form. 5-1, 40 love in the first set. So... <laughs> um, Oh, here we go. So you so are tipping it. Oh, I'm, I'm hedging my bets, but well, let's put my money on Heath. Yeah. Not that I'm allowed to, though. No. There you go. Set. That's set. the first set. That's a great first set. Davison. Play from Heath. A lot of chirping from David here between him and the umpire. But I um, expect David to come back stronger in the second set. He's been around for a long time, like Crumpy said, and he's got experience on the big stage. And he's uh, been in the situation many times before. I don't think uh, Wags played that bad. I thought he played a pretty good set there. He didn't make any silly errors. He was solid, didn't try to hit the ball too hard. So, uh, yeah, look, he's got to get out and do it for another set. Uh, Dave uh, won't go away. He was going to make you earn it. So uh, we'll see what happens. Start to see the light taking over here at Hume. Beautiful uh, venue, isn't it? Hey, look at that. Spacious. Jeez. Some people like picturesque. To say, some people try to say it gets um, windy here. Nah, not at all. I've been here for days and 
Haven't lost your hat once. Eh? Nope. So, so we're at the end of the first set here. So, is there a bit longer, a bit in the change of ends here? But is it just the same time? Same time. Same, same time. time. I think, uh, as opposed to the doubles earlier this evening, the the guys are just using the time uh, a bit more here. It was actually good from Heath. He's sitting there and um, he's pretty much in his own space. And um, in the past, he'd be looking around or uh, chatting to people uh, over the fence and that. But he, it's good to see he's, he's in his own space. And uh, I'm pretty happy to see that. If he was in this position before, he, he'd think he'd had it in the bag, the match. But he, he looks a lot more disciplined. And uh, you know, just take it uh, a bit more professional, a bit more experienced. David talking to the assistant referee here. Um, what do you think this is all about? Uh, sportsmanship. It's par for the course. It's uh, not unusual. That's good. Uh, Heath yeah, didn't get involved with that. He just kept didn't his own space over. and yep. um, sitting up and good to go. So Heath took some time off tennis for a while. He you could a, say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, he, he was a junior. He played with uh, Dylan. They went to a, a World Championship as uh, juniors, which uh, I, I'd shudder to think how many years ago that was. And then um, he uh, gave tennis away for a, a number of years, got into some uh, gym work and powerlifting and so forth as well, and uh, probably been back in the game the last uh, four years, give or take a bit now, and uh, you know, into it full throttle. So... Um, yeah, happy days, but uh, it was good that he had that experience as a junior, and it makes it a lot easier to get back in the game having that foundation. Good start to the set from Wagner here. for Wax here. Just what he would have wanted after going down 6-1 in about yeah, seven or eight minutes. Or yeah, I don't know, did he have the time on? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a good game. Heath needs to uh, yeah, make him compete. That was a pretty loose game. First one uh, sets a tone, so he needs to come back and uh, get a good service game here. We see we see Heath stretching back in his chair a lot. There we go. There's an example of um, what's King and shoves the microphone in my face because I do that quite a bit as well. So <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean some of us might have um, some core stability issues. So just trying to I guess readjust your body to get a bit more upright. Um, and Heath does suffer quite a bit of um, upper body balance problem. So um, that's probably just yeah readjusting himself in the chair. I would say. So so I guess we see. Around um, Wagner's, you know, he's got the um, the strapping around his wrist, whereas in Heath, it really has that strapping around his core. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Heath uses a waist strap, so that I guess that sort of keeps him stuck in the chair. Um, I mean, we all use like a seat belt and some some foot straps as well, but um, for those that do have some core issues, um, they, um, as you can see here on the camera here. Um, it prevents him from, I guess, flopping forward or flopping sideways, um, especially on the serve or if he's on the stretch. Um, yeah, it'd be it'd be hard for him to get his body back upright um, if he was to lose balance. So, it's a great return. Oh, just needs to be a little careful. Here. The uh, second set was six points into it, and he hasn't looked like winning one here. So, uh, you know, he needs to get back on track pretty quickly to go down a. A service break this early uh, wouldn't be good. What do you reckon? It's looking a bit like the first set, except uh, just the other way around. Could change hats. Yeah. Go forehand cross court there. Ball.
There's Lucas in the background. Great slice, just so low. So what's been the change here? Greg, I know we're, uh, we're only uh, early in the second set, yeah, but there does seem to be a bit of a... momentum change there, isn't there? The, the uh, first serve percentage is only hit four serves, but he hasn't hit enough first serves in. And uh, tennis is tennis. If you start hitting second serves, your opponent's going to start pushing you around. So he needs to uh, hit more first serves. In the previous game, he was playing too deep behind the court and getting pushed around. So um, he needs to maintain what he was doing in the first set. And there's those little subtle changes... Um, that are making a difference in the score. I said Wags wasn't playing that bad in the first set. Um, Heath was playing very good and he's just gone off the boil a bit. He needs to get back onto it. What a good looking bunch. Uh, who, uh, girls, I'm single. <laughs> Ready to mingle. How about you, Greg? Oh, I've got nothing. <laughs> It's just an amazing serve. It, every time you watch Lucas serve, it's just amazing how he's been able to adapt to his challenges. You can really see Wags kind of coming into his own, and just like I mentioned before, I kind of kind of expected this to happen. I mean, not. Not for, for it to be happening this quickly, but for Wags to really s pick it up after going down in that first set very quickly. Quite a large Aussie contingent at this tournament. Uh, good to see um, players like Ben Weeks go quite deep in the... The doubles, uh, Henry himself in the doubles as well, for the singles as well. Probably not the result you wanted in the singles, but not too bad in the doubles. Played a good match in the doubles there the other day. Yeah, the doubles wasn't too bad. I mean, we were playing um, the Paralympic gold medalists, so uh, it was always going to be pretty damn tough. But um, uh, the scoreline was ugly, but I still felt like me and Marty were, I guess, competitive in a way. And I, we were pretty happy with our intensity on court. So... Um, that's the best you can hope for when you're playing a team that is that highly credentialed. So, Heath needs to uh, get back to these basics, what he was doing the first set. Just every turn. Oh, I don't want to see that either. Rackets come flying out of Heath's mm. hand. I guess the one thing, though, is that, you know, Dave was hitting with the, hitting with the win there on, in those two games, so... The next two games become quite crucial, don't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, like one breaks uh, enough in a set, but two breaks is a, that's a long way home. Well, it'll be interesting to watch Heath here on this change of ends to see if he's uh, talking to people, looking around. <laughs> keeps that same focus that he had after the end of the first set. It's great to see, isn't it, the change of ends, just to see what each player does and where they look and what they do and Wags put his hat backwards, get in oh, a bit more streamlined yeah. now. Yeah. Look like a start of a shampoo <laughs> commercial there. He's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. going back to tennis mode. Well I guess one of the things that definitely that Dave showed his maturity in that how long he's been around he you know, six one, a lot of players could be and then the one seed. Yeah, pack up the uh, the camp. But uh, so the get-go is a good competitor. You don't get to number one for that many years by not being a good competitor. So uh, yeah, hats off to him. Three love. Davidson to serve. See that. That's, uh, just seems to be playing a little bit quick at the moment. He uh, loses the point and he's hustling over the other side or slowing it down. Take your time.
couple of untimely double faults there. the crowd they're really getting behind Heath on that point after a couple of double faults there just trying to get Heath back on track second serves going down the court and you're going to get picked off it's uh tennis is tennis again you've got to hit first serves you've got to make those returns but way too many second serves in this set and uh, the score reflects it as well another second serve so can you see anything he's doing there greg he's in well the, the it's a bit frustrating as a coach. He's doing the same thing. He's hitting them all in the net, which is uh, uh, right on cue. So um, yeah, he's just dropping his head and uh, just dragging them into the net. He's not hitting up. And uh, I'm sure if you asked him the question, how to hit the ball over the net, he'd know. But he's uh, just not coaching himself out there. So uh, three doubles in a game is uh, just charity. Call off to David Wagner in the blink of an eye. He's coach. Um, Francois. I think Francois joined you this morning. Um, is he just, he's working with a few of the athletes or is he exclusively working with Heath at the moment? In, uh, in Melbourne, he works with uh, Heath, Dylan uh, and Marty Dunn as well from Geelong that uh, Henry played with. And uh, when Henry D, uh, comes over, great Adelaide, point. He, he works with um, Henry as well. Yeah, so um, recently I had a trip to Melbourne um, mid December. Um, I was there for about 10 days, so I stayed with Marty in Geelong. Quite a long drive over to Melbourne, but um, worth it for the, uh, I guess, the training and being able to hit with Dylan and Heath. Obviously, they've got a lot of experience on the big stage as well. So, um, yeah, it was a nice two weeks there and uh, plenty of good tennis and some good fun as well. just struggling to hit the court whether it's into the net or hitting long is just really struggling to make uh, David play at the moment Better forehand down the line there. It's, it's important that Heath gets a couple of games in this set. I yeah, think he needs to get some uh, momentum back because you can't go in losing a set six live. You're not going to feel too happy about uh, going into the third set without getting a game. So um, yeah, it's important that he, he at least gets a game here to uh, get that winning feeling back and say I've got some momentum back. But at the moment, it's, uh, it's pretty quick. It's about eight, nine minutes to get to this stage. Um, and um, I don't know whether he's going home, Heath, or where he's going. So he's looking pretty composed here, Wagner, so. Is there um, mentally is 
really strong. Yeah, I'm just looking over the fence here at Heath, and he's uh, chatting away and yeah, waving his head. I don't like it that. I like it when he uh, gets his own own space and um, just has a think about what's going on. As opposed to the Heath of the first set, which was cool, yeah, he's calm, very collected. disciplined. And he yeah. was all in house, and it was all about him. But he's um, his, his mind's wandering yeah, a little bit. Even pushing this fast up the other end, I'm just trying to get some uh, zip in the doodah or uh, you know, finish this set off quickly. Who knows? Held that shot well then, Wagner, didn't he? And, uh, yeah, plenty of options. Way, way too short from um, Heath again. Great back down the line. Shot, great shot. That might start to fire him up. That was a <laughs> just about fell out of his chair then, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Feeling good on that backhand side. I always find when I'm down that the backhand is just a lot easier to go for and free your arms and swing out and as opposed to the forehand, there's a few more moving parts there. Indeed. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, yeah, the backhand's a bit more stable. Um, I had an able body backhand as compared to the um, reverse backhand, so mine's pretty flat and it's fairly, I guess, safe in a way. The forehand, you've got a bit more spin, as Keegan said, a few more working parts, so uh, can falter a bit more, even though it might be a bit more powerful as well. So is that is that an element that the chairs are so light that then they pivot sometimes when you don't want them to pivot? Is that the, is that the challenge with... It definitely is a challenge, Tim. Um, everyone has their chairs set up differently, and some people... Uh, like their chairs light, some people like their uh, chairs a bit heavier to stop that that pivoting and whatnot. Um, it's a bit like the more the more weight you have in the chair, once you do get that weight going, um, you know you do reach a, a higher speed. But uh, getting started uh, in a heavier chair is a. Is yeah, a lot Shingo's chair was uh, traditionally quite quite heavy, very heavy, um, but that worked for him. Once he got it going, he, he thought he could steer it with the momentum. And that's what I'm building on with my game. I'm putting on some um, some weight to keep the momentum <laughs> going. Someone stomp into the net. <laughs> Make some noise. Once I start going forward, there's no stopping me. <laughs> there's an unforced error from Wagner. But I think they could just about be the first of the set. He has played a pretty good set. Yeah, he hasn't done much wrong. Mm. That's pretty much agreed. There's the first serve that you were talking about, Greg. Yeah, it's just uh, doesn't matter. Tennis is tennis. You can hit first serves, and you're just in control of the point. You don't, then you're uh, you're playing catch up. So another good first serve. That's got a lot of length. Pretty good uh, play is uh, from a returner there hitting it straight back at the, the server as well. One of the uh, the times when a wheelchair player is vulnerable is when they're serving, they're actually stationary. So if you can get a, a wheelchair player to stop, they're very, very vulnerable. And uh, when you serve, you've, you've got to be still. So uh, that's a pretty popular return straight back deep at the, the server.
good example f of that, not on the serve, but um, in the point. He's hitting it right at David, and David uh, struggling to get the ball over the net. Well positioned, wasn't it? Jeez, even even though this set might be gone, you, yeah, you just feel that this this game's important just for just for Heath to feel like he can. Yeah, you've got to uh, just got to get back on the board again and uh, get a game going because it can uh, you can go back in and change ends again, and you can go down one love, two love, and it uh, really gets away from you very quickly. There's that game. You can see Wagner there anticipating that the ball was going to go to his backhand and he really got <laughs> caught there. Yeah, over-anticipating it. We see when, when he serves that he sort of, he just pushes a little bit before he serves and the theory behind that, he just starts moving a bit. There's a couple of theories. One is, uh, yes, you are moving a bit, but also uh, most hard courts have a, a drainage slope on it as well, so he may be pushing up the hill. So he's not rolling backwards when he takes his hands off. So he, he might be pushing up the hill or pushing down the hill. So it's a controlled speed. Um, obviously, you don't notice it when you're playing on your feet, but in a wheelchair, um, the chair does move around a bit. And this morning, when there was wind, um, you do get blown around as well. So you take your hands off. So you're actually controlling the chair by that little push. Looks like Heath might have just found his mojo again. A beautiful backhand cross court, and then a, an in behind Wagner with the forehand. And again, a bit of confidence in those last couple of backhands. Yep, it doesn't matter if you frame it, if you're confident and you put the racket out there and swing the right way. Oh. So the other night, who, who was up... Um, Gabriel Over was up five love in the first set. That's right, five love, yep. And then she, she lost that one, seven five, was it? So I guess Heath, you know, just has to, anything can happen. It's uh, one, of the, one of the great things about tennis, as uh, Crumpy has told me when I first started playing. Uh, the good thing or the bad thing. And another winner. Can be a bad thing sometimes that uh, <laughs> I'll get to the point. <laughs> um, that there's no uh, time limit in tennis. You know, the basketball there's it goes for four 12-minute quarters. The footy goes for you know, your four quarters or your half time. But tennis there's no there's no uh, time limit there. So yeah, look, here's, here's that last point again where Heath goes beautiful top spin forehand inside out. Yeah, he's uh, set it up with the, the return was deep enough and uh, Wags come in. He was probably bluffing a bit at that stage of the game. He said, I'll bluff and, um, yeah, uh, he's hit a, hit a goodie past him. So it's, it's great to see some of the some of the wheelies, the local wheelies that have turned up tonight. Just a few good-looking um, faces in the crowd there. So I must mention um, Uniglow are the global sponsors and they've um, looked after all the ball kids. It's been great. Greg hasn't had the ball kids here for the players. It, it makes life okay. a lot easier, uh, especially in the, the hot conditions here, but it also has a you know, professional uh, aspect to the tournament as well. So the kids are pretty well trained um, and uh, doing the right thing, but it uh, definitely adds to the uh, experience of the tournament. Well, they're, and they've found it they've found it tough over the last couple of days, so I'm sure they're enjoying just being out here on a on a balmy evening. So I've cooked that one. He 
he's talking to himself, similar to what I do. But um, there we go. It's a great shot. Pretty good pushing and nice slice down the line there from Heath. the very satisfying shots in tennis a good backhand slice up the line so that so that that push there Greg that that's a you know you push twice is that sort of yeah most uh, most shots you should be able to get to about two pushes on the court uh, to be fair so um, you start counting them and it's how most pushes when you get from one side of the court to the other a lot better tennis from Heath That's now. a great it's shot, a isn't it? better tennis. So he's settled down. He's getting back to what he was doing before. He's uh, just taking his time, just playing good tennis and coming up with the goods. But uh, those first five games, he was played like he was double parked. He was in a big hurry. He slowed up now. Even if he doesn't get out of this set, it's a good way to go in the third set. He's, he's slowed up, looking better. So we just see he just pushes there. and Yeah. Big serve. Big serve. Might have to get Holly back in here to get a bit of North American. Two or two by sort of thing. <laughs> yep. He seems sometimes at Heath that he's, he's just back and then he makes a few few errors. Is that probably one of the weakest part of his games? Yeah, look, uh, I think we're all guilty of that as tennis players. We, uh, we get it going, we put in a couple of cheapies, but he, he's got a lot of better at it, a couple now, but it used to be uh, a lot of them, a lot of games used to disappear. So uh, that's okay. He's back in this. He's, he's turned around, and I, I think you know, even if he doesn't get out, he's, he's going right. He's, he's made a good competitive tail end of this set now, and that's uh, much better. Smart shot, wasn't it? Yeah. That beautiful sunset, isn't it? So that camera pitch is looking back towards to Melbourne, so... Very picturesque. Is there any tennis on in Melbourne this week? There's a small tournament going on. Melbourne Park, is it? Great return. Yeah, Took that sure early. Yeah, anticipated that one well, didn't he? On the end of the second. 6-2. So, I guess after two sets. Yeah, look, I uh, said the first set, uh, he's played a, a really good first set. Didn't overhit it. Played well. Made a lot of serves. Made the returns. Length of shot was good. And his follow-up and his, his second, third shot was excellent. Um... Again, don't think Wags played that badly, but he's played a beauty. Um, they settled down a bit, and um, he's went off the boil a bit, but uh, got it back in the deeper in the set. So, um, first game is so important in, in any set, but uh, especially in the third set. 
What, uh, what are your tips, boys, for the third set? Well, Tim, I guess after looking at that man, head or your heart, so you'd like to think that Heath, you know, it'd be a great win if Heath could come back. But I think these first couple of games, you know, if they, if you can think in the first set that you know, he got two one up and was competitive early, and I think that becomes a really important part in this in this third set. I think if if David gets ahead, you know, it's going to be a big challenge. Heath. Yeah, Wags is a you know he's a confidence player as well, and he he's a good front runner. He gets in front, and he'll, he'll go hard, and uh, um, Heath uh, doesn't like to chase that much. Run away. It's just gone past. So the one of our great sponsors here at the Melbourne Open is Stockland. Stockland's one of the 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 land um, developers who. Have, who actually provided the land where we are here in Hume Tennyson Community Centre. So they um, they pride themselves on building communities and we definitely here at Hume have a great tennis community growing. Stockland giving you a hat yet, Greg? Uh, no, they haven't. I haven't. I'm waiting for the bucket hat to come out. I think they'd be really useful to, for the <laughs> tennis coach. So when they bring out the bucket hat and the beanie, I'll be front and centre. A little bit of a hold up here, delay in play at the start of the third set. Also, the um, Victorian State Government are a great supporter of the tournament. So um, we had Vicky after Victoria. Vicky, the truck here. A couple of days ago, which is a which is a big truck that travels around Victoria and educating people about what a great state Victoria is to live in. Henry, you agree? Oh. <laughs> As a very biased South Australian, I tend to disagree sometimes. But um, no, I do enjoy Victoria, um, Melbourne especially, being a, a sporty person. Um, I was here for the grand final, unfortunately. So who, who do you back, Henry? Uh, unfortunately, I'm a massive Crows fan. And uh, the man in the match today is a huge Richmond fan. So we've had a bit of banter over the last few months. Me and Heath. Unfortunately, not in my favour. So you're tipping Wags to win this set six, love, are you? Uh, massive Wags fan as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, definitely not the start Heath wanted there. Wagner, 15. Oh, we, we've just had a result over there on court two. I wasn't watching who won that one, so... Uh. Yeah, I, don't, I think Lucas got up there over on court two, so he'll be um, getting off court, getting out of his chair, putting his rackets away, but I'm sure he'll be keeping a, a keen eye out on, on how this one finishes up here on court one. There's that uh, good return again straight back at the server there, and... Um, Wags didn't have any room to swing, so a uh, good solid return. This is where Heath really needs to be positive here. He's got, he's got a bit of a lead and uh, keep going. Okay. Needs to make this return. Get up, get up. It's good length. Two break points here for Heath. So we can we can confirm. Sorry, Greg. Sorry. We can confirm that Lucas did win six two six one there on court two. So he's into the final tomorrow, and we'll play the winner of this match. That's a good game. That's a good game. I like it when you get a couple of break points and you you only use one. It just sets the tone again where you you're serious about it. You don't go, oh, I'll get the next one and get the next one. You you get one and you you grab it straight away and.
it was important, wasn't it, that first game, I think, for Heath to get on the score, yeah, scoreboard yeah, first. Get some, uh, some first serves going, it'd be uh, a lot easier for him. Just got himself caught there. He's got to either. I'd like to see him hit that on the first bounce, yeah, but um, yeah, move up to that. Just be positive. Yeah, he's probably taken the third option, which is the worst. Not first or second. It's a second bounce half volley. Just seems a lot more patient, doesn't he, Heath? He's not trying to press as yeah, much as what he was. he's just sort of playing like the first city. He's not in such a rush. He's just getting back and playing good commercial tennis and yeah, getting the results. Another good first serve here. Also, while this match is going on, there is another match going on on court three. Um, where Lucy Shuker from the Great Britain and KG from South Africa up against the team from China and they've just gone into a third set so um, there's some other tennis still going on here out at Hume at the moment so we'll keep you up to date with those results just looking up the other end the court uh, Dave Wagner here the, again the professional he's uh, he, he drops his first serve but he's made every return this game so that's uh, just good honest tennis but there's another one he just keeps asking the question Wow, what a great shot. shot. Slice, backspin. Wags just turned to the back fence looking to recover and that spin's just killed that ball. Don't mind a good slice myself, Henry. No, absolutely. Inside out slice backhand from Keegan Ochi. It's a special one. You still have nightmares over that, don't you? Yeah, no, no, it's not ideal, especially the one that backspins over the net um, with the drop shot. But um, Keegan's got good hands, so... He's paying me to say this as well, so, yeah. Serving. Good serve there from Heath. Wag's not happy with the call. So, so um, David's better forehand or backhand? Either either, he can change direction off both, so um, but first serves are good. That's a good ball. Yeah. Great shot from Mr. Davidson. First sign of emotion we've seen from Wagner in this. He's starting to maybe be a little bit more concerned. It's like the first set again. He's just slowing down, moving on the ball. It's happy days. Again, Wags is not doing a lot wrong at this stage, so uh, he needs to keep at him.
great serve there. You really feel that this this set's going to be the tight set, though, don't you? It's not going to be a maybe a one-way battle of what the first two were. Well, I'll tee out the end of this point. Serve down the service game. So moving on, moving on to next week, we've got what, what's the breakdown in the draws at the Aussie Open? I guess it, all the players look forward to getting in there. Yep, definitely. So uh, in the men's and the women's Open division, uh, they're both an eight draw. In the quads, uh, it's a four draw. Um, so we'll have David Wagner there. We'll have um, Heath Davidson, who's a wild card entrant into the the quads. Uh, then we've got Australia's own Dylan Alcott. Um, and as mentioned before, Lucas Sitolon that just completed his match on court two. And and the crowds in, in wheelchair tennis around the world, are they they're growing? Yep, definitely. Um, some tournaments you get some pretty big crowds and you know, sometimes d basically depending on the level of tournament you play, you know, you might play futures and Sri Lanka and there might be two people watching you on court 17 down the back or you might be playing at the French Open um, in Paris and have you know, two or three thousand people watching so um, very much dependent on the level of tournament I think Tim. Well I know, I know here in Australia one of the, the, the big moments last year was that they played the, the, the quad final they played it on the centre court Rod Laver at Melbourne Park, and it's the first time they've uh, ever played a wheelchair tournament on the on the main stadium at a Grand Slam. So it was uh, definitely a, a breakthrough. And uh, I was there on the day, and there would have been uh, two and a half to three and a half thousand people. There it was uh, quite a good turnout, and uh, also more importantly, the people had a good understanding of not only tennis but wheelchair tennis, which was uh, very pleasing. Great slice serve out wide. You really, you know, it's really starting to be noticeable that that David really starts to anticipate one way or the other before he serves. Probably comes from about 15 years of tennis experience, I would say. Probably even 20 years. I don't know. Has was was Wagner around when you started coaching properly? Uh, he's been around a good long time. Um, uh, look, I, I can't answer that one, but uh, he's been around a good long time. So he, he's done about four Paralympics, so I guess so. Just missed the lob there by, um, by Heath. Pick up by David Wagner. Yeah, that, that's incredible hands. So uh, where he was in there, that ball was behind him. For him to do that was uh, that's great skills, great effort. And then he's got up and uh, yeah, recovered, competed for the next shot. So uh, big point. Ooh. Lucky break there. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. He's starting to talk to the ball kids. To be fair, I think it's the first one for the match. Yeah. <laughs> And 
Henry, the local times uh, now just creep past, uh, crept past uh, 20 past nine in the evening. Uh, what do you do to prepare for a match uh, when you know you're going on so late? How do you adjust, you know, when you're eating, when you're hitting and, you know, waiting for other courts? What, what does that look like, mate? Um, so you're probably wanting to check at least, you know, the match before to see, you know, the I guess what the score is. Um, for myself, like, you want to have a bit of, at least have a full tummy. Well, not a full tummy, but at least some food in your, in your stomach. Um, make sure you go to the toilet beforehand um, and just some good warm-ups, really. So, I mean, if you can use whether, whether it's TheraBand or um, have a, I don't know, half an hour hit beforehand, that's always handy. So, yeah, it's... But, I mean, with wheelchair tennis, there's not a lot of times that the, the times um, the, the matches go this late. Um, generally, we'd probably be finished by, I don't know, three or four o'clock at the early at the latest. So... Um, it's quite an unusual day for us, but I guess the weather's been so hot that um, this is pretty, pretty much the only way to be able to get through the matches without frying our players on court. So as we saw at the Aussie Open, I think Monfils nearly collapsed um, when he played Djokovic. It was, I think they said it was 69 degrees on court. Um, so that's, that's pretty much dangerous, I would say, rather than uh, um, warm. <laughs> Forehand cross court there by Wagner. Great insight there, Henry. And what's what's the latest match you would have um, ever played in? Um, probably about nine or ten o'clock, I would say. So around this time, um, I think I remember playing a match in Sydney a few years ago. Had the Sydney International that might have finished around ten. Um, but yeah, very rarely would I be playing a match this late. Um, yeah, uh, in comparison to say Leighton Hewitt, who finished his finished a match at the Aussie Open at about 4 a.m. So, um, yeah, that was that was quite an interesting experience, I'm sure, for Leighton. So he just uh, didn't have a good game then. It was uh, yeah, a couple of miss hits and a, a, even an air swing as well. So uh, he had a good lead at two love, but um, yeah, Dave Wagner is is very very consistent. He, he doesn't have too many highs or too many lows. He's, he's solid and. Uh, if he goes off a bit, he uh, could be in a bit of trouble. But, um, yeah, needs to get back on track here. Good service game to stay with him now. Heath Davidson in the shot there. Looking quite pretty fit. Must have had a big off-season. Go a long way. There's not much of an off-season for tennis players, is there? No, no, he's probably had about four weeks off, so... Um, and uh, with some Christmas and New Year in there, so he's been pretty busy. Any theory with that Indian move there that he has? Um, Is he trying to draw his hands or something? I don't know. He's, uh, or yawning, I'm not sure. He needs to get this first serve, first point here. It's so valuable. So that orange ball between his leg there, I just noticed, and just adjusting. <laughs> just caught that one a little bit late. Just has an orange ball there between his legs. Yeah, so Henry, do you have uh, anything between your knees when you sit in there? Um, I don't. The, my knees, like, sort of, I guess, uh, what's the best way to describe it? I think my, my legs sit together almost automatically without necessarily having something to squeeze together. So um, I don't. But I know Marty does as well. Um, Marty Dunn has the same sort of, I guess, what would you, how would you describe it? Um, a, a not many people do it, I don't think. So. Yeah, it's a fine block there, but sometimes when you put the strap across there, your knees rub and they're can be painful. Gets a bit painful. Make a, a blister there, and some prefer so you got a wider stance with your, your seat as well. So it's just a personal thing. Great wide serve there from Davidson. Really getting some good shots here, aren't we? You know, in close and things oh, like that. Like I, 
Obviously watched a lot of wheelchair tennis, but never noticed that Heath has that between his legs. about from that double fault there with um, yeah, Dave, he's, he's pushing in and he, he's pressing on that second serve return, so he's moving in, moving in. Just putting that pressure on the server. Good point. Oh. Good serve there by Davison, but equally a good return, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, look, um, I keep saying that Wagner very rarely misses a return. He, he competes in every point, and um, you, you've got to keep going forward, as uh, Keegan said earlier, that third option playing that second bounce half volley, is a, it's a toughie. Big point. It's a great shot down the line there from Wagner. Tough game for Heath here in the third set. Hopefully he can um, tighten the screws and get back on their horse. What do you think, Greg? Where are we at here? Well, you know, you get second serves. Um, mm. By the philosophy, you, you shouldn't miss a second serve return. When it's on your racket like that, you've, you've got to make those. And uh, at this stage of the, the match, you've really got to make those. You can't give away three points and uh, expect to break serve. There you That's go. a better return. So it should be. And the errors improvements he has to make or he's making, you know, because he's obviously he's been back just a couple of years now. Um, so it's just the consistency. Yeah, yeah. consistency also. Um, look, he's competing a lot deeper in, in matches now, getting back to his first round match, a tiebreaker. This one here, he, he had a good start. Then he, he, he got touched up on the, the second set, but he then he got back into it. He's leading in the third set. So that's a lot better tennis. You're going to win a lot more matches by you know, competing a lot tougher all the way through. And uh, uh, Good serve. Too good. See Wag serve. It's not overly big. Um, not, not a huge load of work on it, but he, he knows where he's putting it every time. Good variety. And he knows what he's doing with that first shot after the serve. Good inside out forehand there by Wagner puts him five two up in the third set. So he's, he's got a bit of motion going on. Just knocking the dust out of his bag. So. Yeah. Here we go. This is the last point there where by running by getting around that. Creates that off court, yeah. uh, inside out, cross court angle that any player, tennis player, wants to create, isn't it? It's yep, the same thing. Yep. So 
But uh, he had a couple of good uh, serves down the tee there, set it up. So he's getting around onto his forehand looking for it. But again, he's a you know, good competitor. Hit those first serves when he needed to do it and in control. Yeah, well, Heath, had, Heath, Heath did have him 15-30 in that game. Yep, and uh, mm-hmm. he had a game point in the previous one. So we were... And here we are at 5-2 to David. Can Heath, Heath find his way back in? Oh, absolutely. The uh, nature of tennis uh, says it's not over till it's over. You've got to be winning at the end. But he's, he's going to have to um, play like he did in the, the first set to do it. Um, Wags has been solid all the well, way there's through. A, there's a good backhand cross court. Fairly solid, deep, quite um, inside the sidelines there. Plenty of margin from Heath. Doesn't take a, you know, I mean, obviously he has to play well, but. Sometimes it doesn't take a lot to win points like that. Didn't have to hit the cover off it, so. Just have a quick that. A pretty low percentage shot at that uh, stage. The match was in control and just had plenty of other options. He picked the toughy. It's a coach killer, isn't it, Crumpy? Comes around again from uh, uh, Dave making return after return. I can't think of him the last time he missed a return. So uh, that's just that constant pressure building up the whole time, and you start dragging their double faults. It's a big point there from Heath, wasn't it? That he, he yeah, he, that look, he needed that one, and um, again, you can probably count the errors that uh, Dave's made on his in hand. Is said he, he's just been. Damn solid. Shot from Heath there. Good couple of shots in a row. Touch there from David. One of the harder shots to hit when the ball's on the rise and you're, you're chopping down on it. Fifteen all, big time, right now, Greg. Yeah, banging on with the cliches again. The second serve, it's a time to get up and be, be aggressive. You you can't be passive now. You got to get up there, ask the question. It's a great volley. Better lob. 
great point around. Mm. And like it's too big. Just a bit just wide. wide. Just wide there. Someone's noggin was in the road. <laughs> Why do we always do that off a, a pole? We always club this beautiful return and then because there's nothing on the line, Greg. <laughs> Teddy Ollie's still competing well, though, Heath, isn't he? He doesn't Absolutely. look like he's, you know... No, he's not he's going away. He hasn't uh, packed up. He's a uh, good, solid tennis. He's had a few moments there, but he's, he's reined it in. Serve down the tee, wasn't it? Match point here. Don't, don't be surprised if he serves wide. down the line. I think Dave agrees with that one, but it's, um, you never want the core to go against you, but on match point up. Um, here we go. Let's have a look and see what we can see here. Man, pretty close. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I reckon that was a good call. I know, I had the net tape in the road. So yeah. Is a hard one, I'm sure, depending on what side of the Pacific Ocean you're on. Is um, yeah, yeah, you thought that was in or out? He viewed that one. Hey? That's a great shot there down the go. line. Here we go. That brings the crowd right into it. crowd now, isn't it? There is. Straight oh, back hand cross court, which brings us back to 5-4, so it looks like we're going right down to the wire out here at Hume Tennis and Community Centre. Dave's still not happy about that call down the line. Well, we've got a bathroom break yeah, from bathroom Heath. Break from Heath. And just as Henry said before, I mean, they're deep in the third set, so I think we'll give him a concession this time. But just as Henry said, it's always important to go to the bathroom before your matches. What's your take on this, Crumpy? Uh, knowing Heath, it's a legitimate uh, toilet break. <laughs> and um, you know, Wags up there having a chat with the umpire. I don't think the umpire is going to go, hey, I think you're right, game, set, match. So it's, uh, you've got to take it and move on with it. I haven't seen an umpire yet change his mind. So uh, easy from the uh, cheap seats the other side of the fence, but uh, it's not going to happen. We've got Philip Goodman there. The referee. Um, having a chat to Dave. We've got to, we've definitely got to give a bit of a shout out to the ball kids that have done an amazing job and they're still here at um, twenty to ten at night. Twenty to ten. Far past their bedtime. Um, and yeah, they've done a great job. So they'll be back here in the morning. We kick off again at 10, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Time. So I'm not sure what that translate around the around the globe, Greg. But um, it'd be be good if we can get Aussie into the final, wouldn't 
Absolutely. Um, look, I, I think I'm just going to stay overnight. It can't be that much longer to uh, wait for a few hours to start the 10 o'clock matches. But uh, to get he through the final, he's played really well. He, he deserves to, to win this match and uh, get in. But on the, on the flip side, so is Dave Wagner. He's, he's played really, really solid, consistent. So, um, yeah, hats off to both of them. Yeah, it's definitely, um, as we thought, this, this set has gone right down to the wire and they've both had their momentum swings at different times and um, with Heath coming out to serve once again, you know, what's the first serves, I guess, in this game would be really important. And Wags had a look at the match point and um, yeah, it, was, it was a close call, but it, it is what it is, so you, you've got to get on with it. Walk us through Henry in Wag's position. You've had that 40 30 match point, you've gone for it up the line. Um, yeah, pretty obviously a pretty tense moment for him. He clearly, um, possibly unlucky, um, but yeah, I mean, now with the, the long toilet break as well, there's probably a lot of time to, s to um, think about what to do for the next, for the next game. Um, and clearly, from five to up as well, he had had a few chances so um, it's going to take a lot of mental strength to be able to um, finish this last game off here if he can it's um it's definitely it's definitely one of those times when um you know this this break is really going to make a a difference one way or the other isn't it that here he is we can see him rolling back onto the court I guess just for everyone else out there, that the, the players have two different chairs. And maybe That's right. just Yep, so we have our everyday wheelchairs, so um, pretty self-explanatory, what we used to get around every day, uh, from the moment we get out of bed in the morning to the moment we get into bed at night. That's what we use. Um, and then the, the chair that the athletes compete in is the tennis chair, so um, specifically designed to turn a lot quicker, be a bit more stable when you're leaning back and serving and chasing balls and bending over and, and leaning and whatnot. So um, if you took one of these tennis chairs um, out on the streets, you wouldn't get too far. You'd get, get out the gate, get a few metres out the gate and you know, you'd be stuck. Not Very cheap either, by the way, Timmy. The chairs, where yeah. so depending on, I'm sure there are some. Yeah, you got your top end, yeah, top of the line or higher end ones and you got your your basic ones, but um, it's a good a good average price would be around five thousand dollars each. Yeah, sounds like um, well, Tennis Australia's invested in some chairs, haven't they? They're really the, sort uh, of really making a development chairs, so they're down the uh, the economy range. But it, for a starting wheelchair, they're they're great for to get people in for the first time and uh, experience playing in a sports chair for the first time. So it's a, a good investment for the the clubs to use them and um, get players playing more tennis. Yeah, well, I know I know here in Victoria, Disability Sport and Rec, that they have have some chairs, and and once the hub started, that they were they were all out, which was a <laughs> Which was a great it's thing. A good so, thing to have, isn't it? Cheers <laughs> been used. Yeah, for a change. So, um, we always have one here at Hume for any new players wanting to come down to to have a hit to to really sort of understand. It's a, it's a great return, isn't it? It's very good. Great first serve. Equally a great return there. So, is he going to go more to Wagner's forehand or backhand here? Do you think? Yeah, yeah probably a, yeah, just body serving a bit, but he's sort of a little bit. Rolling the serve in the first set. That's a quicker one, so he's got a bit more on it. Oof. Right idea. Just squeezed it a little too close to the line there. There's a great good serve out serve. wide. Good great serve. serve. He's had a lot of success with that serve out wide tonight, so you know. Look, you hope you hope he just remembers that. Come yeah, in, just you know. a heck of a time to serve it at the Love Thirty. I'll, I'll hit a slider and uh, come up well. Where to here? Do you think? Ah, uh, I think he's body. going body forehand. Is he 
you left-handed, Wags? I hope it's right-handed. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good point. It's a great rally. It's, it's a, a great rally, point. but it brings up two match points for Wagner. Here we go. Is he going to go that slider again? Out wide. Oh, it's a great wide. forehand down the line. Magnus uh, making every turn, asking the question on every point. It's just good, solid tennis. Match points number two. Ball toss got a bit low then. Mm. Yeah, That's too good. Too That's good. a great well match. It's a great match. Well played to David. Yep. Uh, bad luck, Heath, but you should be proud of yourself, mate. Yeah, that was a, that was a competitive match. Uh, either player could have won that, so uh, that was a great effort. But uh, Wags, even though he lost the first set 6-1, um, I still thought he played a great first set. But Heath played a, a really, really good first set, so he's capable of that tennis, so he should take a lot away from that. Yeah, I guess that you know, gives him a bit of confidence leading into next week and... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you've got to be happy with that, so that's good. Although he's beaten him before, um, yeah, Dave was, was very good all the way through. He was excellent. So we might, um, we might just see, just before we go, we might see if we can get, see if we can get David the guys to over. Yep. come over and, um, and just have a bit of a chat. So um, Once he gets his tape off, of course. We might see if we can, we can bring him in. So there we go. down quite considerably since the um, I mean since the middle of the day but uh, uh, definitely since the start of the match I'd almost say it's uh, a little bit chilly at the moment it's a good match today this evening uh, what time have we finished 10 to 10 of a late finish. Um, a shame for Heath going out in the semi finals here at the Melbourne Open, but uh, likewise, good preparation for the Australian Open, which starts uh, this coming Wednesday out at Melbourne Park. The guys have both played a lot of tennis over the, the past few weeks. Um, playing the tournament in Sydney and the Sydney International last week and over here to the Melbourne Open uh, for this week and, uh, and and then a few days off and then straight into the Aussie. So always a great time to be alive as a tennis player, tennis fan, Australian in Australia. Nice warm weather. Shouldn't be too long. We're just waiting to see if we can get David Wagner over here. A few words after the match. Some of David Wagner's accomplishments over the years. Uh, he's been the world number one quad singles player. And doubles player. Uh, a great champion, David Wagner, been to 
many Paralympic Games. Got a swag full of medals at home. Definitely knows his way around the court. So we're just about to go courtside uh, and hear from uh, the man of the moment, David Wagner. Well, guys, after um, a great semi-final in the quad singles between local hero Heath Davidson and party wrecker David Wagner, hey. <laughs> it was a great match. You enjoy that? Uh, thanks, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to play when it cooled down finally. Uh, it felt great out here. Um, you know, it's kind of different to play under the lights, I guess. Maybe that'll help us for next week going into AO. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's it's nice out here. You know, he had some hometown support, so it was great. Uh, get some people out watching, and hopefully some people enjoyed the match uh, on the on the big screen. Yeah, well, you know, we were just talking before. His first set was a, was a great first set, and... Um, and then your second set, and then the third set just became a real battle, didn't it? How did you see the match? Yeah, I, I, says, I guess I'd see it pretty much the same way. I mean, the first set, he came out and, and was on fire. And, and you know, I mean, I, I noticed that right off the bat. I came out a little flat. Um, and and if you come out flat against players with a lot of strength, uh, you're, you're going to struggle. And, uh, and I know that. And so I uh, had to kind of pick it up a little bit in the second set and hope that he cooled off. Um, changed my tactic a little bit. Uh, think think about matches in the past with him and, and what works and what doesn't. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's a really strong player, so I, I knew that going in, I had to be ready. Um, and I just came out flat. He came out on, and that's not a good combination. Yeah, well, well we've got to say that um, you know you, you seem calm even after that first set. You know, like, and I guess that's a bit of the experience you you bring every time you come and play. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you can't you can't let it get too too worked up out there. You know, I, I thought there was a few calls that that, that were missed uh, both ways. Um, th those kind of get under your skin a little bit. Uh, you bring that up a little bit, may maybe focus on that. Try not to focus on that. Instead, uh, focus on what you can do. Um, but yeah, you know, just playing a lot of these matches, late night matches, long day matches, sit around and wait all day matches. Uh, you know, I've played in every every environment under the sun that you can imagine, and and so uh, probably probably some experience helped a little bit. Uh, you know, and and you know, I, I don't I don't I play to win, I don't play to lose, and and I know that you know I'm, I'm out there, and if my opponent's on, I, I've got to change my tactic, and and I'm fortunate to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, and I can resort back on those at some point. So. Yeah, well, hey, look, so Lucas Sidol waits for you. Yeah. So in the final, what, yeah. how have you gone against him and what what are your thoughts on that match? Uh, you know, we've played each other a lot. I'm not sure what our head-to-head -head is, but we've played each other a lot and it's it's always enjoyable. He's a, he's a tough competitor and he'll be ready to go, I know, tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll just be, I'll be hopefully come out not as flat to start tomorrow. Maybe, maybe because we're earlier on, it'll, it'll help. Uh, but yeah, get a good night's sleep and just look forward to, to playing another uh, strong player tomorrow and, and give it my best bet. So yeah, so well, you guys are first up tomorrow morning at okay. yeah 10 a.m. Okay. So um, you know we'll be back we'll be yeah. back on then again. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully I think whereabouts whereabouts are you from in the states again? Uh, well, right now I live in San Diego, California. Uh, so it's a great place to live. I grew up in Washington State, which was a wonderful place to grow up. So uh, pretty much the west coast of the United States. So. Well, I guess you can shoot a few messages back home and tell people back home they can watch you tomorrow because yeah, right. cause if it's 10 a.m. here, well, like, that'll be about you know, 4 or 5 in the afternoon. So yeah, perfect yeah. time for a few yeah. beers down on yeah, down right, a Pacific yeah, Beach or right. somewhere yeah, like that. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, get get some uh, adult beverages in you or, or so coffee, soda, whatever you drink. Uh, uh, but, but get something and sit by the telly and, and enjoy it and watch. And um, also want to just say uh, to my grandma, I heard she has pneumonia, so I hope you get better soon, grandma. <laughs> well, Dad, thanks, thanks very much, and um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and, and all the best. Yeah, all right, thank you. 
So, guys, we'll, um, we'll sign off here from Hume and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow for some great tennis. We've got the quad finals um, with David Wagner and Lucas Siddall and we'll also then follow that with the men's final followed by the women's final. So we'll look forward to seeing you here tomorrow from um, Hume Tennis and Community Centre.